Good morning and welcome to our 16th weekly uh, broadcast. Um, if you haven't joined us before, the way it works is you write down your questions beside um, the, uh, the video you see there in YouTube. And then I don't end the call ever until every single question has been answered. Uh, and so I've upgraded my equipment this week. I've got better sound. I've got a backup generator as well. So we don't go down like we did last week at one point. Uh, so knock on wood here. So please answer your questions uh, and I'll start answering the questions in the order in which they are, they're received. Um, thank you. So let me just uh, go over here now and look at the questions. Okay. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning, Juan. Thank you. Hi, Barb. How are you? Barb is saying, good morning from Central Oregon. Uh, looking forward to this episode. You're killing it with your videos, Chris. Thank you, Barb. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Juan has, has got a, a question here, which is, what would you do if you were 15 to get into Stanford or an Ivy League school? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, this past week, I created a vlog on Stanford University. You can go and check it out if you want to. Um, and I was actually a, on a panel in a venture capital class. And during the drive to the vlog, which was, or drive to Stanford, which was about half an hour, I, I explained how to get into Stanford uh, or an Ivy League school. Now, I did not get into Stanford, but I know what it takes to get in. So here's what you have to do. And this, um, with all my answers on this call and all calls, I try to make the answers very generic to apply to everybody. And this might mean you applying to IIT uh, in, in, uh, in India or, or any other great school in the world, Oxford, Cambridge, McGill, Represent, etc. That's, that's where I went to school. So what you have to do is it's not all about grades. You know, a lot of amazing people get in to these best MBA programs in the world with only a 3.0 GPA or even a little bit below. It happens a lot. You have to do well in the GMAT, okay? And so... The GMAT is uh, not an intelligence test, which is why I did really well on it. It's not an intelligence test. It's how well you write the test. And I'm going to give you all a tip right now. It's going to help all of you when you take tests for the rest of your lives. Whenever you read a multiple choice question, and my success rate in getting multiple choice questions right is really, really high, even if I have not read the question. And here's why. If in the answer to any multiple choice question, you see the word always or never, then that is the wrong answer because you have to think of it like you're a lawyer. Can you contest or appeal any of the answers to these questions? Okay. Next thing I'll tell you really quickly is you have to differentiate yourself. You have to, if you want to get into a great school, you have to add something to the student body that nobody else has. And so you have to think of like a, a director of admissions uh, executive. You know, they, they want to populate the class with people from different countries, different educational backgrounds, different work experience, different charity experience, etc. So do something completely different. And when I went to business school at, at Columbia, which seems like years ago, uh, in my class, it was incredible. There were people from every country I could think of. Uh, There's also a lot of people that were in the Peace Corps, which, which was awesome. I loved it. Um, I, I always feel that if you give in life, you get longer term, um, 10 times more. So think about it from that perspective. And so how did I get in? Well, I got in, one of the reasons was, um, I actually did something in my last year of undergraduate school and Juan, you'll like this because you're still in school. What I did was I, I, I was in Canada and I wanted to have something on my resume that no American would have and not many other people would either. So what I did was I went on exchange in Cuba to the University of Havana Faculty of Economics. And it was a bit of a risk because I know that the U.S. and, and Cuba were, were not great friends back then, but it was a, a risk worth taking. When I wrote my essays, I think it kind of it helped. So the bottom line is you want to differentiate yourself as much as you can. Now, my boss, when I worked at Goldman Sachs, a wonderful woman named uh, Yumiko Murakami, I worked in uh, Japanese equities for a while. What she did, and she went to Harvard and Stanford. She's amazing. Um, so I asked her, I said, Yumiko, how did you get in? What, what did you do, like work experience wise? And she was in the United Nations, working offshore, uh, getting on her hands and knees with a metal straw, trying to defuse mines. I mean, how noble is that? And my application looks pretty uh, boring compared to that. So hopefully that, that answers the question for you. Uh, you got to just be different. And there's a great book you can read to get in. Uh, which will help you with your essays tremendously. 
And the book is called uh, Getting Into the Top Business Schools. And the author is Carpenter and Carpenter, a husband and wife team. So Juan, read that book. Uh, and I promise you that will help you out tremendously. And if you don't get in, keep applying. I know people that have gotten into Harvard Business School that have applied three times and gotten in. Okay. And nobody is smarter than you. Remember that. Okay. So let me see what the next question is here. And I put up a new uh, television monitor here so I can look closer to where you are to read the questions. And if I don't answer your questions, just please let me know. Good morning, Dante. How are you? Uh, hi from Allentown. Deborah, how are you? We connected on LinkedIn recently, I think. And, and whenever I, when I saw your name actually here uh, I, in the Allentown, I thought of that Billy Joel song. Okay, Victor, good morning. Victor is saying, good morning. I've learned a lot from your course. I'm eternally grateful. I'm grateful to you and to all my students. You, you all inspire me. Thank you. Um, my question is, how do I improve my writing and reading skills? That's a great question. So what I would say is just, and this sounds simplistic, but just read a lot. And when I was a kid, my mom would make me go to my room every day for other stuff too, but to read <laughs> uh, during the summers. And that really helped me out tremendously. You want to be a voracious reader. And it's so hard to read now because there's all these distracting elements around us. So what I recommend you do is listen to audiobooks. They're just as good. They're just as good. But read as well because audiobooks won't help you understand where the comma placements are or the semicolons, which I still don't know how to use in that sort of thing. And when it comes to your, your writing skills, um, start writing online. Start publishing on LinkedIn. I write articles on LinkedIn. I do my daily videos on, on LinkedIn as well. I hope it's not overkill. You can always unsubscribe. Uh, but when you write a lot, it kind of forces you to become a better writer. And the last thing I'll say in that is use Microsoft Word because Word will help you with comma placements, capitalizations, all that stuff. And there's other applications you can use too, like Grammarly. Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, and if you have English as a second language, and this sounds out there, I advise watching Netflix or television in general, and turn the closed captions on. Netflix has a show for everybody. All right, so um, let's see here. Rafe, good morning, Rafe. How are you? I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Love your Apple logo there. <clears throat> Hi, Chris. Um, can I comment on Pakistan's currency economy? Pakistan's currency has drastically depreciated. Is there any chance of, of PKR recovering against the U.S. dollar? In what direction you think it's heading? Um, that, that's a great question, Rafe. And and I don't I, I don't know <clears throat> what the future holds for currencies in general. But I can always explain to you if you want how it works. So the way that the um, the, the government in Pakistan controls their currency is is as follows, and and all countries as well. And, and I'll make this brief. And, and if you're interested, um, you can watch a, a vlog on how interest rates are changed. This is all fake money, by the way. But what happens is this. Uh, if the government of Pakistan wants their currency or any, any government, if they want their currency to change versus the U.S. dollar, then what they do is they buy bonds from the public or they sell bonds to the public. And so here's how it works. Let's say you're the government of Pakistan and you issue bonds and you, Rafay, buy the bond because it's got a high interest rate, better interest rate than the bank even. You buy that bond. Okay, so I'm the government of Pakistan. You're a consumer. You're a fed. You buy the bond, meaning you give me money, fake money. Okay. I take that money. I give you the bond. Now there's less money out there. Okay, this money, I'm putting it behind my back. It's out of circulation. And since it's out of circulation, that means that the price of money for Pakistan goes up. Okay, that's how it works, meaning the interest rate in Pakistan, which means if the price of money goes up in Pakistan or any country, then the value of your currency versus the United States dollar goes up a lot. And that's called an open market purchase. And all countries that have floating exchange rates work exactly this way. And the last thing I'll say about this is, and to make it easier for, for us to understand, is when you go to the grocery store and you buy avocados, let's say for fun, they're a buck each. Then you go back to the grocery store a couple of weeks later and they're $3 each. You talk to the manager of the store and you say, hey, what's up, man? Why, is, why, are, why are avocados three bucks now? And the manager tells you because there are fewer avocados out there because there was a big drought and farmers can't make as many. Okay, and so the price of avocados go up. That's exactly how money works. If there's less money out there, fake money, 
then what happens is, um, well, real money for this example, what happens is the price of money goes up. And the store manager for the avocados is the Federal Reserve chairperson in the United States. That's the person that controls interest rates. In Canada, it's the Bank of Canada. In Europe, it's the ECB or European Central Bank. In some countries, it's the Minister of Finance. So hopefully that answered your question uh, on the currency in, in Pakistan in, in general. Uh, and when it comes to um, making macroeconomics calls, I never do it because it's you can't make money that way unless you're George Soros. So what I like to do is I like to make long-term investment decisions in stocks. And I don't worry about the economy as much. If we're in a really bad economy, meaning a bear market, which means stocks are going down, that's when I buy. I love to buy when nobody else is. And Warren Buffett said that you want to be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Last Warren Buffett quote before the next question is this. Warren Buffett once said, I love this, that the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff, where it goes on sale. Okay. So give me one second. I want to make sure that the sound is working. Looks like it is great. Excellent. Okay, so Rafe, I hope that answered your question. If it did not, please let me know. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Kunal. How are you? Okay, Juan has a, a question on any advice on giving a TEDx talk. Um, I, I want to give one and I'm deciding the topic. Please, if you can share with me any tips to do this uh, as far as choosing the topic and everything else, thanks a lot. My pleasure, one. So I gave a, a TEDx talk uh, a couple of years ago uh, at, um, at at San Francisco State, which was uh, one of the universities I, I used to teach at during the evenings. Um, and, and the best thing I could tell you in order to prepare is, and I, and I hate, I'm not doing this to make money. I, I love doing this call, but just take my course called the Complete Presentation Course. It's a little long. People have critiqued me for that. It's 16 hours long, but there's one section dedicated to making slides for a text presentation and also uh, rehearsing your presentation and scripting your presentation one from scratch. And so that, that will help you out a lot, a lot. And in terms of, um, uh, of topics, and this goes for anybody else that wants to give a speech as well. I cover every type of speech you can possibly give. I have 25, 150 page books you can download that I created for that, um, uh, for that course, which cover 25 different types of speech topics. Now, in terms of what topic to give, I, I advise you to, um, to talk about whatever you're most passionate about in life, okay? If, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, it will show, and you won't be as successful in that speech or your profession in life. Um, so just do what you're passionate about, and this goes for everybody on any type of topic. So whatever you talk about, it has to be something you love. Like for me, it was education and how education fixes every problem in the world. Uh, and I had fun with it too. The topic was a T, T-E-A, Technology, Education and Acceptance. Solves every problem in the world. Watch my Brazil speech I gave recently uh, as well, which uh, Udemy helped me out a lot with as well. And you'll, you'll see, you'll see for ideas. All right. Next question I've got is from Rohit. Rohit, thank you for the uh, the message in the course and the LinkedIn message. I'll give you feedback on the presentation soon, I promise. Okay, Rohit's got a question. I'm reading Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's so simple yet impactful. I completely agree. Uh, Rohit then says, is there any ideal way to study an entire MBA in one course? Uh, how many hours should one spend per day or week? And how did I plan that a student should take the, the course for best experience? Okay, thank you. So first of all, let me comment on the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, that book had a, a, a big impact on me. <clears throat> it helped to change my life for the better, of course. Um, when I was younger, I was terrified of public speaking. And I took the Dale Carnegie public speaking course. It's available worldwide, by the way. You can take it in any country. It's the best education I've ever had. Now, Warren Buffett um, also went to uh, Columbia uh, Business School, and he also did the uh, Dale Carnegie course, and he does not have his uh, Columbia degree on his wall. He has the Dale Carnegie Certificate of Completion on his wall. There's a great HBO documentary on why. Watch it if, if you care. But uh, Dale, or, uh, Warren Buffett would not be who he is today, according to Warren Buffett, had he not taken that course. And for those of you that, that want to learn more about public speaking, but you don't want to pay $1,000 for the Dale Carnegie course, which is the best tuition you'll ever spend. What you can do is this. It doesn't matter what country you're in, in the world or city. You can go to meetup.com, that's meetup.com, and search for the word uh, Toastmaster or public speaking. 
And Meetup is this amazing website that allows you to meet people with interests in different areas. And you attend these meetings and they're free. And it's kind of like a, a digital modern day version of what Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak from Apple did. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak went to meetings like this. And one of them was called the Homebrew Computing Club. And that's where they actually gave a demo of their first Apple. Uh, and, and the rest is history, literally, literally history. So you can go to meetup.com and search for public speaking events close to where you live. And this goes for any skill that you want to learn or you want to practice. And if you want to become a great public speaker, you got to get out there and present. You got to take chances. You got to run to your fears in life. I used to be terrified of public speaking. I would have rather uh, died than, than giving a speech. It's true. So anyway, I learned to, uh, to, to enjoy it. Learn to enjoy it because whatever weakness or perceived weakness you have in business or in life, I promise you, your competition has that too. And if you learn to embrace that weakness and turn that weakness into a strength, then what happens is you shine and you become much more successful than all of your peers. But you got to love doing it and you will. Run to your fears. Okay. Next question uh, I've got here is from... Um, <clears throat> Uh, from Rafay, uh, good morning from, from Pakistan. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and Rafay, if I didn't answer your question properly about uh, the Pakistan economy or currency, um, using the, this fake currency here, uh, please let me know. And I'd, I'd be more than happy to do a follow-up right here on this call. And that goes for everybody that asks questions. If I don't answer right away, uh, just let me know. Thank you. If I don't answer correctly. Okay, next question I've got is from uh, Kunal Jane. Uh, good morning. How are you? Um, why are big corporations so bureaucratic? It's a great question, and it's why I work for myself. Uh, it was it was mind numbing and, and really frustrating for me uh, working for for other people uh, when when stuff didn't get done and, and people were very very political. Let me just clear this layer here so you can see a little bit more of me. I don't know if that's a good thing, uh, but what happens is this: <clears throat> a founder starts a company, and the company does really well. And the company hires lots of people and the company goes public and it gets really big and the company keeps innovating and creating new amazing products and services and it's not bureaucratic yet then what happens is the founder leaves the company or is not engaged or resigns or whatever passes away god forbid and then what happens is this the new ceo is accountable to the board of directors and she or he doesn't take as many risks as the founder did in terms of creating new products. And neither does everybody else that works at that company that's a, an executive. And the reason is this, in most cases. And, and I published a vlog last night on it. I talked about Hewlett Packard, and I'm so sorry if you work for HP. But what happens is this, if you're, if you're an executive in a company and you're climbing the corporate ladder, if you innovate, if you step out of line to innovate and create a new product, and you fail, then you're done. You're no longer climbing that corporate ladder. And if you are successful, you're not going to get paid anyway because the whole compensation structure would be disrupted of the entire company. Now, what does this have to do with the founder? Well, when a founder leaves a company, they don't take as many risks because a founder or an entrepreneur, and I hope all of you are and will start your own companies one day, but what an entrepreneur is, is a risk taker. They love taking risk and they don't care what other people think about them. They take risk. And when a founder leaves a company, everybody else in that company, you know, is, is sticking with the status quo and just, you know, trying to collect that paycheck. And they know that if they innovate and they're not successful, their career is over. And that's why big companies where the founders left tend to buy versus build. Microsoft bought LinkedIn. Great company, Microsoft, by the way. But once Bill Gates left, and God bless Bill Gates, he's one of my heroes for what he and Melinda have done. But once he left, innovation really slowed down a lot. It really did. And the same can be said for any big tech company in general. Whenever the founders all leave, in most cases, innovation leaves with the founder. And founders don't care what investors think either. They're so long-term focused. And so Jeff Bezos, for example, at Amazon, he hardly ever gets on the, um, uh, the Amazon quarterly earnings conference call. He doesn't care. He just is very long-term focused. And if he wasn't long-term focused, we wouldn't be having this call today. 
because cloud computing is cheap today and EdTech exists today because of Amazon Web Services. And I can talk about that soon if you'd like me to, but Amazon's the most important software company that um, has ever existed. It's the most important platform solution ever. And so entrepreneurs take risks, uh, founders take risks, people who are not founders don't take as many risks. And one more quick thing I have to mention, and the problem with Washington and all governments, and the problem with big business, where the founders are no longer there, is they're so incredibly short-term focused. You know, governments will do what they can to win a near-term election. Companies will do what they can to please investors for this quarter, meaning this three-month period. They won't be long-term focused. That's a problem. That's a problem. And the problem with big business in general is that board of directors and shareholders, they hold the CEOs accountable on a quarterly basis. But the founders have more leeway. And so if Elon Musk said, I'm going to create an office tower on Mars and it's going to be profitable, but not today, but it will be in 10 years. People might believe him. But if he left Tesla, for example, and another executive became CEO and that executive said the same statement, then the board and Wall Street might laugh at them and that executive might just be short term focused. So that was kind of a long winded answer, but I hope that explains to you why corporations are are somewhat bureaucratic. They're not all like that, but it's just it is what it is. You know, they, they run the company for shareholders who are short term focused sometimes, which is problematic. Uh, and I would never take my company public ever. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, so, Canal, I hope that they answer your question. Um, okay, bonus points to somebody who tells me what this is, okay? And you can't be in Canada and answer this question. But this brand has 70% market share in Canada, okay? Versus uh, Starbucks that has 40% here. Damn it, I just gave a clue there. What's this brand called? You can't be in Canada to answer that though. It's the best coffee ever, by the way. All right, um, next is from Rohit. How do I start my day? Uh, is there any ritual do you undertake? Uh, I tried every morning listening to all the intangible things I'm grateful about. It, it, it really makes my day positive. Rohit, I do the exact same thing. So <clears throat> what, I, what I do is this, uh, and, and I'm different, uh, and you don't have to do what I do, but I, I, I say a prayer, first of all, uh, and, and I thank God for 10 things, okay? Uh, and you could just be grateful for 10 things if you don't want to do it that way. Um, and 10 things every day, and they're usually this, exactly, okay? Andrew, Matthew, Dylan, Christine, my mom, my dad, my brother, Kitty, my, my, my sister, Kate, Elizabeth, um, my, um, did I say them all? Christine, my wife, Andrew, Matthew, Dylan, my mom, my dad, Jamie, my brother, Katie, Elizabeth, and my students, 10. I do that every day. And it gets me into a peak mental state and happier too. It gets me happier. Uh, and then I, I'll, I'll say a little prayer as well. Um, and I won't let myself check this thing ever until I do that. Now, I'm trying to do other things as well. And I like to biohack a lot. And so I do take a lot of vitamins. Uh, and um, I don't know if you can, you can see them here. I, I take a, a lot of vitamins. And Ray Kurzweil, uh, who um, heads up engineering at, at Google, uh, he introduced me to this. And Ray Kurzweil is a guy that believes in life extension. Uh, and he's a brilliant man. And read his book uh, if, if you want his way, Ray Kurzweil. Uh, and, and he thinks all you got to do is make it for the next 20 years and then you can live for 150 or 200 years, given how much money is going into life extension, venture capital startups right now. Um, so anyway, uh, and I have my coffee as well uh, in, in the morning. Uh, and um, I put bulletproof um, uh, a coffee in it. And I also put a bulletproof oil and, and a teaspoon of of, of uh, butter, okay? And I know that sounds crazy, but people have been doing that for years, hundreds of years actually with coffee, putting a teaspoon, a teaspoon of butter because it helps you think on your feet and be really sharp, which is how I feel right now. I mean, look, I'm speaking really gooder today, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's dad humor and dads tend to repeat jokes over and over and I, I promise you I'll try my best not to do that. Um, but I do that and, and I feel like Bradley Cooper from that movie Limitless, uh, minus the looks. Um, anyway, so that's, that, those are the rituals I, I, I do. Um, I, I did burn out recently, uh, as a lot of you know, that have watched my vlogs. I went for one week where there was no voice in my vlogs. There was just background music and, and text. And the reason I, uh, I, and I lost my voice, remember that a couple weeks ago on this, uh, this, this webcast, um, <clears throat> pardon me, because I, I didn't take my breaks. 
And, and if you don't take your breaks in life, uh, you'll burn out. And, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's I'm, I'm a little bit out of shape now. And I, I, uh, I, 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 I'm trying to, you know, get, get back in shape and, and think more clearly, but I didn't take my breaks. And the problem with me is that I love, I don't know if it, it's a problem kind of, I love what I do so much that I feel like I don't have a job. And so I do this all the time. I, I just, I just love what I do, but take your breaks. Otherwise what happens is, is you burn out. Uh, and I've certainly burned out, but um, I'm taking my breaks now. And I schedule my breaks every single day. And so before I go to bed, uh, and, and I publish a vlog on this this week, um, and, and I'd like all of you to do this as well, please. <clears throat> before I go to bed, what I do is I write out my schedule for the next day. And there's a saying that if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. And I really believe that. I really believe that. And so if you go to my website, all lowercase, haroonventures.com, slash schedule, all lowercase. You can download a one pager. And I made a vlog on this this week as well. You can watch that if you care. Uh, and, and I schedule everything I'm going to do the next day, the night before. And I get lots done because of that. But big problem with me, and I'm self-deprecating and self-critical, is that I just didn't take my breaks. I didn't schedule enough breaks. In, um, and that's why I uh, <clears throat> I, I was sick there for, for, for a while. Okay. Anyway, hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, let, let's see what's, what's next. Dante, um, <clears throat> pardon me. Hi, Chris. You used to say that we should find a business partner who can compensate for our weaknesses. Uh, you have so many students. Why do you choose to work with Wrigley? That's a great question. So Wrigley um, was, was one of my, uh, my students at, at, at San Francisco State. Um, and, and I've had many thousands of students over the years, you know, at Stanford, Berkeley, San Francisco State, other schools, et cetera, that I've lectured at or guest lectured at. And, and the one thing that one thing I'll say about Wrigley <clears throat> is that he's got the following, which I love, incredibly positive attitude. He works very hard. Um, he, he's, he's like kind of like self-managing too. It's amazing. Um, I think he was just kind of born driven, right? You, you can, it's either nature or nurture. Maybe it's a little bit of both. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, and, and also um, he, uh, he comes up with great ideas. Uh, and he's fun to work with, too. He's just fun. He's just fun. So anyway, positive attitude is probably the most important one, though, uh, that, that I can think of. Um, and I had um, you know many, many thousands of students to, to choose from. And I'm just humbled that he said yes to wanting to partner with me. So anyway, it's been fun so far. Um, Wrigley, if you're on the call, I, I love you. <laughs> Sorry. Damn, I can't take back that humor. That's, that's stuck with me forever. So if I try to run for office, I'm pretty well screwed. Like Winston Churchill, actually, when, when he was prime minister, he used to do this, which in England is, is what I, the other half of that. That's, that's half a piece, by the way. Um, and so his, his staff made him do that. Wrigley, I love you, brother. You're doing a great job. Don't ever leave. Thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. And, and if Wrigley ever does leave, I'm going to make sure that, that he's way better off than he was working here. And he doesn't have a job. He has a passion. Okay. All right. Next question um, <clears throat> I've got is, oh, and by the way, and, and I've had failed partnerships in the past. Like I, I remember I've partnered with people in the past um, and my gut told me not to do it, but I did it. Go with your gut first. And I can't explain that, but you know what I mean. Fool me once, shame on uh, you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Go with your gut. And a lot of us have been burned in personal relationships or professional relationships in our lives. And a lot of it goes down to our gut saying, gosh, I knew I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have trusted that person. Okay. So if you do get a partner, just be careful of that, please. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> and, and the second this feels like work, what I'm doing right now is the day I quit, which I'll never do. Okay. Ne next is, um, uh, hi, Chris, really excited about your upcoming MBA course. Uh, when will it roughly be out? Um, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, so, <clears throat> I've been wanting to do this for a while, uh, and, and, and I've got it almost ready. I'm going to release it at some point next year. And um, it, it's kind of like I did a vlog earlier this year on visualizing your goal and vocalizing it. And if you don't tell people what your big goals are, then it won't happen soon enough. Okay. And so that's one of the reasons why I put out that video a couple of days ago. I was like, damn it, I got to get this thing done. You know, I, I, I keep working on it and trying to perfect it. It's never going to be perfect. Just get it out there because whenever you create something, the last 5% of creating it for me usually takes 
95% of the time. And so I put that video out to kind of give myself a, a kick in the butt to get it done. It will be out some point next year. And I hope that many of you on this call participate in it. It will be groundbreaking. Um, it'll be value added as well. And the problem with accredited business schools is that they teach you theoretical stuff and university in general. They don't teach you the important stuff like how to get a job, how to network, how to give a presentation, um, how to sell, how to sell. And that's what an entrepreneur or a founder is, a great salesperson. You know, like Mark Benioff, who sells something you can't see, feel, or touch. He sells something you get excited about, which is cloud software. That's what Mark Benioff does. So anyway, that's, that's what an entrepreneur is. And the best skills um, for entrepreneurs are not taught in business school. Uh, and I intend to disrupt that and make my students much more successful than any business graduate from any of the top business schools ever, ever. You know, I'm going to help you with your resume. I'm going to help you interview. I'm going to help you present. Uh, I'm going to make you more competitive than anybody. And my goal is for you to start your own company one day so you can live your life on your terms and not have to deal with, as one of the questions was earlier, bureaucracy. You know, there's nothing worse than going to work every day and not getting paid for your hard work. You know, I believe in a meritocracy, and this sounds harsh, but I believe you should eat what you kill in a good way, of course. Um, but I hate big bureaucracies where it's all about politics and you only get paid because of relationships you have with certain people in your firm. You know, that, that's not what business is about. Business is about disrupting an industry and living your life on your terms while improving the lives and inspiring billions of people at the same time. That's my students. Okay, that, that's what I want to do with, with this course. Sorry, I've, I've gone off topic here. All right, next question is from Rohit. And I don't read these questions ahead of time. I just read them on, on the fly here. Um, Rohit says, I'm very curious uh, about the, uh, oh, another question, about the, the HEMBA. So uh, Haroon Education uh, Ventures uh, MBA. Uh, I watched the trailer. <clears throat> it is uh, like a Hollywood trailer. Can you please give me a hint about exactly uh, how it, it might be? Um, so I, I don't want to divulge too much more. Um, but, but I will say that uh, it involves um, new content. And so the way it's going to work is, I shouldn't divulge too much, but gonna, I'll, I'll tell you some now. Okay, so there's going to be prerequisite courses that you take uh, on Udemy. And when you complete those courses, then there's going to be case studies and live business studies and me making your resume perfect and your LinkedIn profile perfect, me teaching you how to present, me helping you grow your business model from scratch. But there's gonna be prerequisite courses uh, on, on Udemy because I don't wanna make it redundant based on stuff I've already taught you, okay? And I'll talk more about this soon, but let me, let me just leave it at that for now. But it's gonna be really, really exciting. We're gonna study real business cases, um, real business stuff that's gonna make you incredibly successful. So um, anyway, I'm excited by it. I'm putting my reputation on the line. That's, that's how much I believe in it. Okay. All right. And I put this new uh, microphone system in here uh, and, and it's so good. Um, let, me, let me see if I could show you actually, because um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm kind of a nerd, uh, but let me, um, let me lift this part up here first. So in order to get the sound quality better, oops, I'm an accident waiting to happen. I know I've got this here. It's so big, you can barely see it. Let me see if I can put it here, actually. It looks like this. And what it does is it goes on the back of the microphone. And I got it because I want to improve the quality materially of my webcast. Give me one second. So that when I launch the business school program, um, it's perfect. And I want this to be uh, entertaining as well. Uh, kind of like a, uh, a Hollywood blockbuster movie. <laughs> All right, we're done there. We're done. Hopefully the sound is still good. All right, one second. Sorry about that. But I put this thing in and, and it's so damn good that you can hear the, the, the tiny little mouse clicks as well. This is where people log off. <laughs> Hold on. All right. When one teaches to learn. All right, next question is, um, is this, and I'm just going to scroll down to see uh, if you can still uh, hear me after that. <clears throat> Looks like you can. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and, and I've got a backup generator as well. So I promise you with this come hell or high water, this call is going to be live forever. <clears throat> Pardon me.
All right, we're good to go. I'm, I'm very, oh, next question is from Dante. Do you have a special criteria in working with specific types of people? Yes. If they have a negative attitude, I don't ever want to know them. And I know it sounds harsh, but um, years ago, and I mentioned this at the beginning of my entire MBA course, years ago, I cut off everybody in my life that has a negative attitude. And I think that, you know, there's a saying um, that one bad apple spoils the whole damn bunch. One rotten apple causes all the others to rot. Um, and I think that attitude is the most important thing in, in business. Um, I want to work with somebody that, um, you know, I don't care what their background is. I don't care if they have no experience at all. I don't care. That's actually better because I want them to come up with innovative new ideas. I want somebody that's willing to roll their sleeves up, work extraordinarily hard, and that loves it. And you can tell when you interview somebody, um, you can tell if they love what they're doing or if they're acting. So it's got to be somebody that thoroughly enjoys what they do and somebody that's ethical as well. Somebody that's ethical. And, and sometimes it's hard to tell, but just go with your gut. And there's four things to tell if somebody is lying in an interview. And, and I was trained when I worked at Citadel, um, Ken Griffin, who's the, uh, the brilliant founder uh, and CEO of, um, of Citadel, um, what he did, uh, and the guy's so smart. I remember I met with him and he, the guy can talk about everything. He's brilliant. But what he did was he hired 25-year FBI and CIA veterans to train us uh, on how to read people, to tell if they're lying. So here's a couple of tips. And a couple, two of the four have to be right at least for you to maybe conclude that this person is lying. Okay. Number one, do they break eye contact when answering a question? Okay, if that's your demeanor, that's okay. Like sometimes I look down when I'm talking, it's just the way I am. Number two, do they ramble a lot? Kind of like I was with the MBA program I was talking about a minute ago there. <laughs> just kidding. But you know, like kids, they ramble a lot uh, when they're lying. Okay. Number three, do they shake their foot or their hand or whatever it is? As long as they haven't had too much of the best coffee that's ever been created right here. Um, and, and that's kind of like a, number three is kind of like a lie detector test. Like in Meet the Parents, uh, when, when De Niro, De Niro, you know, had uh, <laughs> Ben Stiller hooked up uh, to that, uh, anyway, that, uh, that, that lie detector test. And the last one is this, if they cover their face or their mouth when they're answering a question. So if two, at least two of the four are, are there, then uh, you might conclude that they're lying. And that's important for me too, whenever I'm, I'm interviewing somebody as well. And a lot of times you just go with your gut as well. So um, let me just... Um, wholeheartedly say that I really, I really enjoy uh, teaching you guys a lot. <laughs> Sorry, dad humor, no more dad humor. Uh, but anyway, th those are just some of the telltale signs. Okay, so next up is, is this, um, uh, ghost to ghost, G to G. Hi, G. Um, hi, Chris, I'm studying uh, the CFA, which is a certified financial analyst exam. And, and there's, there's three levels in the CFA. There's level one, level two, level three. And you write this, or you, you study at night uh, for, for three years, and there's a test every year for three years. It's, it's, level one is basically a repeat of the MBA. Level two teaches you about more about bonds and options and stuff and ethics. And level three is kind of like that too. But level one is a repeat uh, of, of an MBA. And anybody that's considering taking it, the CFA, which I encourage you to, I think it's great. Um, I think what you should do is, and what I did for level one, is uh, I, I, there are books by Schweizer, S-C-H-W-E-I-S -S -E or Z-E-R, Z in Canada, E-R. Uh, and there are a, a little books that will teach you how to study instead of reading all the massive books they tell you to read. Uh, but the question here is, um, uh, I'm, I'm studying for CFA level one, and I'm working a 40-hour week job. Uh, can you give me advice to organize my time? By the way, when you come to Puerto Rico, I, I'd love to come to Puerto Rico. We should set up an event there. If you could schedule an event there, I'd, I'd love to do it. Um, you know, as much as I love teaching from from this 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 room here uh, downstairs, um, I, I want to do it in person at some point, and I want it to be more interactive and live, which is why I'm doing these things now. Um, so the way to study for any exam. And I'm telling my kids this now, Andrew, he's in high school and I'm helping him study, is to organize your day every day. Like I told you about with that template you can download at haroonventures.com slash schedule. Also, this is crucial. Do your studying first thing in the morning when you get up. Very important. 
So I do this webcast. I, I get up at 7 a.m. and we go live at 8 a.m. for this broadcast every Thursday. If I did this every evening, I would not be as uh, I would not be as sharp or, or speak as good as I do right now. But you want to study early in the morning. This goes for anybody that's going to study for any exam ever, ever. I want you to do it first thing in the morning. I want you to get up an hour earlier every day because, dude, that one hour in the morning is the equivalent of seven or eight hours at night. I promise you it is. And that's why when people cram for, for uh, exams, it doesn't work, which is what I used to do. Um, you got to get up first thing in the morning and do it. And, and one other thing I'll tell you also is, is this. Another way to trick your, and I biohack a lot, as you can tell by the vitamins and stuff I take. It's all healthy, by the way. But one other thing you can do, and this works for me beautifully, is at four o'clock, four or five o'clock, go to the gym and go on the elliptical trainer and, ex and while you're exercising, study. I know it sounds crazy, and you can only do studying stuff you can read, like Kindle books or emails, whatever it is. But when you do that, what's happening is the elliptical trainer works every muscle group. And of course, you don't work your arms when you're replying to emails or whatever it is or, I don't know, scrolling. But what it does is this. When you exercise, you're sending oxygen to your brain. And when you send a lot of oxygen to your brain, it tricks your brain into thinking that it's fresher than it actually is. It tricks your brain into being as as good at um, inhaling information as it does when you first wake up in the morning. And Jeff Bezos, what he does is he never holds meetings in the afternoons. He gets up every day around eight, eight or so. He makes breakfast for his kids and his wife. And then he goes to work and his first meeting is at 10 a.m. That's when he's most fresh. So try to study first thing in the morning and the same thing with meetings as well. Uh, and whenever I mention meetings at work, because it's tradition, I, I have to hold this cup up here. It says, sorry, you can't read that. It says, I survived another meeting that could have been an email. <laughs> Which is not this meeting, by the way. But you know what I'm talking about. That person you work with that's empire building. They want to set up these meetings to look important and get to the next level. Uh, I'm being a little bit cynical there. It's not always how it works. But a lot of time it does. You know what I mean. All right, next up is this uh, uh, from Dante. So Dante, who's from uh, Ottawa and Montreal, is saying this. I recently read an article written by, uh, by Bill Gates. Uh, he talked a lot about improving focus with meditation. Huh. Do you have any experience with meditation uh, in your own life? You know, I, I'm going to start doing it a bit more. So my, my wife took me to, uh, to yoga a couple times. And the benefit of yoga is it put me into this, um, this really relaxed mood like meditation does. And years ago, Tony Robbins taught me a breathing exercise to do, uh, which, which helps me focus a little bit. And I know that meditation, a lot of it is breathing. And here's what Tony said. He said, I want you to do this following exercise 10 times. What you do is this. Inhale for five seconds. Hold your breath for 10. And exhale for 15. Inhale for five. Hold your breath for 10. Exhale for 15. Rinse, lather, repeat. Do it 10 times. Uh, and these are breathing exercises uh, that will make you feel like you're in a peak mental state. It helps. It helps. I mean, wh whatever it takes to be more competitive uh, than, than your peers. Um, so it's interesting about Bill Gates. Uh, he wasn't like that before. And Bill, Bill Gates is so much happier now uh, than, than he was you know, decades ago when he was running his empire, um, just doing beautiful things. But what Bill does, and I used to read, uh, Bill was actually the first person, uh, I think, that had a vlog. He had a weekly vlog I used to read. Uh, I think it was Microsoft.com slash Bill Gates. I think he took it down since. I don't know if it's still there. But I read it in the 90s, 96, 97, 98, 99, every day, or every, every week. And his vlog, so his blog would talk about books to read and ways to improve yourself. And if you get a chance, like subscribe to Bill Gates on Twitter because he talks about these wonderful books that, that he reads. A lot of them are too high level for me. Uh, but when it comes to meditation, Dante, let me know if he, if he recommended a book or not. But when I met with Bill Gates a couple of times in my life, whatever, uh, and when he's really, really thinking hard, he does this. He, when he, he rotates back and forth like this. That's what he does when he's thinking hard. And I think when he was on trial too for the uh, Microsoft Monopoly uh, trial back in, which was a witch hunt, uh, back in 2000, 2001, when he was being asked questions, he did that too. It's kind of interesting. That's his way of putting himself in a, in a peak mental state.
Okay, but but I will meditate a little bit more. I, I certainly need it. Okay, uh, next one. Oh, thank you, Victor. I'm more grateful. Next question is from Arun, who's got the best first name ever because it rhymes with the best last name ever, maybe. Just kidding. Um, hello, Chris. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Um, my question is, how can one become a good investor? So th there's there's a couple things uh, that, that, that you can do. Um, I think what's really important is to use the five-year rule, which is this. And this will make you longer term focused. Um, so the five year rule, which which I, I, I created um, is ask before investing in any company. This goes for everybody for investing in any company. Ask yourself one basic question, which is this. In five years, is this company going to be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? And I published a vlog last night and talked about how turnarounds don't work in tech. And, you know, if, if you're looking to invest in Yahoo, uh, it's because you think Yahoo will will gain market share versus Google in five years. You think Yahoo will be more relevant in five years? I don't think so. Um, you know, if if you invest in in any company that is cheap in tech or any sector, you got to ask yourself first: Is it cheap for a reason? Is this company going to be more relevant or less relevant in five years? So hopefully, the answer is more relevant. Okay, and then what you do next is, and you, you can watch watch my vlog if you want on um, how to assess a management team, where I teach you uh, in one episode how to analyze uh, a, a management teams uh, for a hedge fund investment you want to make in a, in a publicly traded company or a private investment in venture capital. You analyze management team a lot. Okay, um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to analyze the, the, the size of the market. Market's got to be huge. Don't ever invest in a company that has a tiny market share or tiny market. Because even if they get 100% share of that market, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't move the needle. Okay. And then you want to build out your, your model as well. And, and I have a lot of courses that, that teach this sort of thing. So um, I have a course called uh, the Complete Financial Analyst Training and Investing Course. That will teach you financials. Um, and then I have a course also, which I recently published, called the Complete Business Plan Course, which includes 50 templates, which Wrigley created, which is awesome. Thank you, Wrigley. Uh, and that course will help you to create a business model, but it'll also help you to analyze a business model from scratch. And even with my complete cryptocurrency course, I created a 49 step process to analyze any cryptocurrency company or any company in general. And I never like to tell you what to buy stock wise. I always want you to do your own research. And I feel like my role is to teach you how to fish instead of giving you a fish, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Well, one more thing, Arun. Um, what you want to do is uh, you, you also want to um, um, you want to be a contrarian, and you only want to buy when everyone else is panicking, when it feels really uncomfortable. It's kind of like I don't know if any of you own a house. House. That's how we say it in Canada. It's not house. It's house. Okay. Uh, but when you bought your house, remember how un uncomfortable you felt, um, and now your house is worth a lot more. It's kind of like that feeling. You know what I'm talking about. And so you want to buy when everyone else is panicking. You want to be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Um, you want to buy when the whole world is panicking. Otherwise, what happens is this. Let's say that all of your friends and everybody you know owns a stock. They love it. It's gone up a lot. It's done great. Everybody loves it. Okay, if everybody loves it, then who's the incremental buyer? What pushes a stock up higher is somebody else that wasn't a shareholder. I'm saying the obvious. It comes in and makes an investment in that stock. If everybody owns it, then there's no incremental investors to drive it higher. And that's why I love investing in stocks when everyone is selling them. Okay, I love to invest in broken stocks, but not broken companies. Okay. All right. Next question is this from Jerome. Hey, Jerome. How are you, man? Um, hello, Chris. Uh, good morning. No questions for now. Just wanted to, oh, thank you. Recorded my first two lessons in Portuguese about programming. Everyone is enjoying. Awesome. Good job, man. That's, that's awesome. And Geronimo got together and they met through this platform here. See, this is a great platform. <laughs> YouTube, that is. They met here uh, and uh, Geronimo is helping uh, Dante with, with programming stuff as well, which is great. So I just connected uh, two new Steves, Wozniak Jobs, instead of it's, it's Dante and Geronimo. Okay. Um, and the drama goes on to say, if it wasn't uh, for your tips, um, I would take uh, way more time to get there. Thank you. Um, thank you for helping me to, to conquer my fears. 
in my dreams, buddy. Next step, I will translate the lessons to English. God bless you. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you. And thank you for that. I'm, I'm really humbled by that. And and you and, and all my students, uh, you know, you, you guys humbly, humble me. You know, I get out of, you get me out of bed in the morning. Um, I love what I do because of, because of all of you. This is fun. You know, again, when, when one teaches uh, to learn. So so thank you. Um, and, and there's a guy, a uh, Geronimo named uh, Diego, who is an amazing teacher on um, on Udemy, and he teaches in three languages. Uh, and I think he's going to be the biggest business teacher in the history of, of Udemy. He teaches in English. He teaches in Spanish and Portuguese. I have enough trouble with, with, with English. Uh, but check out his courses as well if you're curious on how he does it for all three. Okay. And he's such a good guy. I'm sure he'll, he'll take, a, take a call from me as well. Um, all right, let's see what, what's next. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, next, uh, um, Rohit. Just wanted to recommend a movie called uh, The Aviator. It's a great movie. It teaches a lot about business. Oh, interesting. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check that out. I, I, I haven't seen that one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Lawrence, uh, hello from South Africa. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Um, let's see here. Uh, that's, uh, that's where uh, Elon Musk came from. All right, Dante. And Elon Musk went to school in Canada, too. All right. Dante is saying, I also took a, an open course taught uh, by uh, at Harvard Business School online. The professor offered an interesting comparison between Jane, uh, J Jim Simmons and Warren Buffett. So Jim Simmons uh, is a guy that created um, uh, this electronic trading-based investment firm called Renaissance. And Renaissance has thousands of Linux servers running in parallel that pick stocks. And his returns have been 40 to 50% almost every year. I don't know how he does it. But what he does is it's computer code and a bunch of parameters are fed in that will tell him what stocks to invest in. For example, if it's raining a lot, he won't invest in uh, restaurant companies because fewer people go out to eat at restaurants when it's raining, that sort of thing. And Warren Buffett, of course, is the uh, quintessential value investor. It shows that both complex investment strategies and simple investment strategies could work well for different investors, but simple investment strategies work better in the long run. What's my perspective on that? I completely agree. And the best investors I've ever worked for keep it simple. So there's a guy named Carson Levitt, and he's why I'm in San Francisco. So Carson Levitt um, was my, uh, my, my boss. He, he actually hired me uh, at, at a couple of different hedge funds I worked at. One of them was Citadel, the other was Pequots. Uh, and Carson Levitt used to work for George Soros. And Carson, he's a great guy. He's amazing. Um, so Carson um, uh, w was the guy that, and I'm dating myself here, but if there's any older <clears throat> older on, people on the call like me, he's the guy that drove up the price of Qualcomm materially in the month of December, uh, or at least made a lot of money from it, in December of 1999. And so I, I asked, uh, Carson made a billion dollars in that one stock Qualcomm, ticker QCOM made a billion dollars in that stock in the month of December, 1999. And when he joined Soros, he joined Soros in the summer of 1999 as a portfolio manager. And when he joined Soros, uh, the, the whole fund, the firm Soros was down 15% that year. And what happened was he got the firm up to, I think uh, it was up a lot by the end of the year, maybe 20% or so, but he had a 40% December. Maybe the, the firm made 40% that year because of his, his December. And I remember asking Carson after I joined Citadel and I was working for him. He's a great guy. He's a mentor. Um, I, I asked him, Carson, how did you know? How did you know to invest in Qualcomm in 1999? And he kept it really simple. He said, well, you know, I was walking down Fifth Avenue and I noticed more and more people using the, these cell phone things. And, and I'm butchering this a little bit. I noticed more and more people using these cell phone things. And, and, and I asked myself, what's in these things? It's a Qualcomm chip. So I invested. And he kept it really, really simple. And he's a great investor because of that. He doesn't get emotional about stocks. Um, I remember one time uh, when I worked for him at, at Pequot, it was, uh, it was August of uh, 2007. And, and, and you'll love this because this involves Renaissance, uh, Dante. Um, it was August of 2007. And what happened in that month was all these quant funds uh, that have these models that make a lot of money the inverse was working. They were losing a ton. For that one month, it was bizarre. They call it de-risking. And that month, Renaissance, as well as, um, as the Goldman Sachs Alpha Fund, which, which was another big quant fund, they were down a lot. 
And every stock that had great fundamentals was down. Every stock that sucked was up a lot because that fund was covering their shorts. And I'll never forget this because I, I, I went into um, I, I went into Carson's office that day uh, at One Market Plaza. And I asked Carson, I said, Carson, you see what's happening to our book? Like we were losing, we made money that year, but we were losing a lot that day. And his response to me was this, I'll never forget it. He was like, Chris, you're not going to believe this. I found all this wrapping paper on sale for Christmas. And so I'm wrapping my kids' presents now. <laughs> so he was detached in a good way. And all great investors are unemotional. They're unemotional. Uh, and that's why, one of the reasons why he's, he's, he's a great investor. You know, he's very, very long-term focused as well. And just ask yourself that five-year question. You know, in five years, will this company be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? I did that with cloud computing investments years ago, and I did, re I did really well. You know, I own NetSuite. And if you want to see my write-up on NetSuite, which was bought by Oracle, NetSuite is kind of like SAP, uh, but for the cloud. That's why Oracle bought. But if you want to see my write-up uh, on that uh, and, and how I approach... Uh, write-ups on all stocks, my, my philosophy. You can go to my website and download my template and the example on NetSuite that I wrote. And that address is as follows, all lowercase, haroonventures.com slash template. Uh, and, and you can see what I look at. But you want to look at fundamentals first, valuation second, and then technicals way, way, way down last. And you only look at technicals to decide when to get into a position. And if you're curious about technical analysis, um, I, I published a blog on technical analysis as well uh, that, that you can watch. Okay, great. So um, I, I believe in the bottom line is keep it simple when you invest and be long-term focused. And Warren Buffett, actually, it's funny you mentioned this because I remember watching a panel years ago that Warren Buffett was on. And Warren Buffett, they call him the sage of Omaha for a reason. He keeps things uh, really, really simplistic. Bonus points if anyone can tell me um, what shirt this is from, what, what the album is. I'm not going to show you any more than just that. But what Warren Buffett did, he was on this panel and uh, they were talking about newspapers. And I think it was the late 90s. And the topic was, are newspapers, you know, great investments? Because gosh darn it, they looked cheap at a single digit PE. But we knew, we knew that earnings estimate was wrong. And he uh, basically, um, he didn't say much, but he said this. He said, if newspapers were invented before the, in before the internet, would we read more newspapers or fewer? And then he said this. If the internet was created before newspapers, would we read newspapers at all? Simplistic. Really, really simplistic logic. And I want, you to, I want to challenge you humbly, and I say with love in my heart, to think longer term whenever you invest. Whenever you invest. Okay? So anyway, hopefully, hopefully that, that's helpful. But I do believe in, in both perspectives. Uh, as, as both of them are, are usually, usually long-term focused. Usually. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Next from Geronimo. Oh, okay. So uh, Geronimo uh, is, is, is telling you something there. Uh, I love when you guys talk to each other. This is awesome. Dante. Okay. Rohit is saying, um, there is an ed tech channel on YouTube. Oh, it's called Value Valuetainment. Let me just do a screen print of that. I'm going to check that out. All right, thanks. All right, and I should probably mute. Let me mute my uh, my screen. Hold on. Okay. I just muted the volume on, on my computer. I want to make sure it still works. Oh, Rohit got it. Rattle and hum. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what, that's what we say in Canada. Good job. Okay, good. So you guys can still hear me. Great. All right. Let me, let me go back here. Sorry. All right. Stay with me. There's not that many questions left, so I'll throw that up here. Hold on one second. All right. Trying to find where I was. Aha. Okay, here we go. All right, so Rohit's saying there's an ed tech channel on, on YouTube uh, called Valuetainment. Uh, Patrick Bet David, do you know him? I don't. Uh, he teaches about business in a fun way by interviewing uh, established people. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll check this out. Uh, and whenever I have to remember something, I, I turn my watch around 
Uh, and then later on, when I go to look at my watch, I'm like, why am I looking? At, why is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. I have something to remember, which was uh, uh, this recommendation. Thank you, Rohit. And by the way, if anybody is curious about this thing, this is, um, it's called Whoop, W-H-O-O-P. Uh, and it was made by this, this Harvard dude. Um, and most players in the NBA wear these things. I suck at basketball, please. Uh, but what they do is it's a little, it's a sensor. Uh, and um, it, it senses lots of things. And, and a lot of NBA players wear this underneath their wrist guard. It's part of my whole biohacking thing. Um, the only problem is it's kind of tough to put on and off. I, I sleep with it as well. It, 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 it actually analyzes my sleep. Uh, it gets paired with my iPhone using Bluetooth. Um, and it tells me how much sleep I need to get every night. And it also tells me when I should skip exercising. You, you, ever, you ever get into that mood where you're, you're, you might be getting sick, you're not sure, and then you go to the gym anyway, and then you get sick. This will warn you before that happens. Anyway, a little, little off topic there, but but thank you. Oh, I got to turn around this way. That's right. <laughs> I will check that out. Thanks. All right. So Rohit is saying, um, I love long courses. That's one of the reasons why I love your courses. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I like how I divided my presentation course into Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, etc. It's, it's really innovative. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm working on a new course uh, that I'll, I'll publish on, on Udemy soon um, where I'm using, um, it's a different convention. I'm using pool balls. Uh, one, so each, when you play pool, you got 15 pool balls uh, and then you got the, the white ball, right? The cue, I think. So anyway, uh, ho hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. I'm having a lot of fun uh, making it. Um, okay. Thank you, Rohit. Appreciate that. And and I find that um, in, in general, and, and you're, you're probably all like this too, if, if I don't innovate uh, or if I don't try to do things a different way, I get bored. Um, and, and that's why I, I, I'm just not a great person to work at a big bureaucracy. I, I like doing things differently. I like think different, thinking differently. I like challenging myself differently. Um, and, and, and that's why trying to improve this webcast uh, using these these graphics, whatever, at, at, and using this audio thing, which, you know, God willing is working, knocking on word. I, I, I'm enjoying it. And if I wasn't trying to innovate, I get bored of it. And, and the same thing goes for, for anything you all do at work or even at school. Find innovative ways to study, you know, like biohacking, right? Don't do the Adderall stuff, though. That wasn't available when I was younger. Um, and, and, you know, little things like, um, uh, like, like biohacking with, with coffee, uh, or, or vitamins, whatever. I love doing that, but with my courses and when I create stuff, I try to be innovative and I'm trying to, with my vlogs and, and I take uh, risks and I was the laughing stock of all my students, I'm sure, um, on many occasions. But one of them was when I, when I vlogged with my drone to bring my drone into this room, remember that one? And I crashed into this door. But I left it up there, uh, the video, so you can laugh at me, uh, not not with me. Um, but but I always try to be innovative, and I encourage all of you to be innovative as well. And if it feels like work when you're doing something, then come back to it later, because you won't be productive. Okay. All right. So um, next up, and Peter Thiel, by the way, he does not hire MBA students. Peter Thiel runs Founders Fund, which is a great venture capital firm. He was the first investor in Facebook. Um, he doesn't hire MBA students because they're already taught how to think, according to him. I kind of disagree, but that's what he thinks. And the name of his firm is, uh, is Founders Fund. Go to foundersfund.com. You'll see he's invested in the who's who of lots of companies, including a, a company I invested in years ago. A couple of them, actually. Um, but he invests in Founders. That's why he has Founders as the name of the fund. Okay. All right. Next up is... Um... All right. Uh, what is my, uh, what if you're passionate about traveling? Can you make a course on that? Why not? Why not? There's a guy actually that I, that I uh, partner with and there's a, there's a chainsaw going on. Uh, my, my next door neighbor likes to, um, probably doesn't like me very much because he actually cuts his grass on Thursday mornings and does chainsaw stuff. Don't go anywhere. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. And I'm, um, I'll be right back. Yeah. All right, hopefully that's better. And um, actually, I want to ask you guys a, a, a favor. I'm not going to talk for the next five seconds, okay? And I'm going to count down. And I want you to tell me if you hear any humming at all. Speaking of rattle and hum, okay? any humming at all, because I want to make sure that the sound quality is perfect, okay? So I'm going to go now for five seconds, ready? Right? 
just write write your comment. And when I catch up with the questions, I'll read that. Thank you. So yes, you you can make a course on traveling. I, I partnered with this guy named uh, Jimmy and Rain. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm actually going to take you to that website. We're we're going to go there. We're going to go together to Udemy, and, and I'm going to show you uh, what what he's done. Uh, but he makes a he makes a, a living off of this as as well. So give me one second, and we're going to go together to um, Udemy. I've got this new screen thing I'm, I'm working on here. There we go. Uh, and if and if you can't read that, let me know, okay? But let, let's go here, uh, and then um, let's actually open this. I want to open a new browser. I like to keep that one there. Okay. And there, yeah, Jimmy Narain is his, his name. Jimmy. I love autocomplete. All right. So check out uh, uh, Jimmy's stuff. What he does is he travels a lot uh, and he actually ties it directly uh, into his courses as well. Um, anyway, just go, go to, go to his webpage, uh, and, and you, here it is lifestyle design. Uh, and so there, there's this course here. Um, and, and yeah, here it is here. And this guy actually, his trailers, um, he, he, he was the first guy on Udemy, uh, to create kick-ass trailers, like motion picture quality. And he does a rev share with a couple of people, I think that create the trailers for him. Um, but you might want to check out this one here, Lifestyle Design, Introduction to Becoming a Digital Nomad. You can do it. You can do it. Like like Wrigley, for example, um, Wrigley, I, I don't know where he is. I never know. I think he's in San Francisco. I don't know. Um, but but he has a, you know, I gave him a laptop and another computer and he just, he works anywhere he wants to, anywhere he wants to. And that's the way business should be. I mean, look at us here. This is beautiful. We're, we're having a conference call and People are in many different countries on this call. So there's no reason why you can't start your own company and work from anywhere you want to in the world. Like my, my course, the complete um, uh, financial analyst course, uh, I wrote that in Paris. I was with my family. You know, we went to, um, we went to, to Israel uh, and then we went to Paris and we rented a place using Airbnb in, in Paris. Uh, and, and I wrote my, my course there. That's what I did. I came up with inspiration there as well. It's kind of kind of fun. But but check out uh, Jimmy's stuff here. Uh, and his trailers are 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 ridiculous. Like the, the quality as well. Um, I'm gonna mute that uh, so it doesn't mess up our, our broadcast here. But um, anyway, um, check out his stuff here. It, he'll talk about um, cheap travel tips and all that stuff as well. So let me just uh, X out of here. Um, I'll go back here so I can see the questions, uh, and then I will clear this layer here. Hold on one second. There we go. Okay, I'm getting faster. Good. It's fun. Okay. Yeah, Barb, I agree. It's a great book. All right, Rohit's got a, a question. Um, uh, Rohit's saying, thanks for reviewing my first presentation on Nintendo. Uh, frankly, no other teacher would go that far uh, to help and guide. Thanks. I'm grateful. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, and Rohit, by the way, if you're, Nintendo is the oldest tech company in history. Right? We, we think Apple's great. It's been around for, for decades. Google's great, whatever. Facebook, whatever. It was just founded, basically. If you go to my vlog, you can watch a vlog I made on Nintendo. Uh, and it's uh, it's over 20 minutes long. It's kind of long. Uh, and, and I talk about the history of Nintendo. Nintendo was actually launched uh, well over 100 years ago, 128 years ago. Uh, and I even mentioned in that vlog uh, a quick conversation I had with Bill Gates. Bill Gates was there's a guy I was with, we were talking to Bill years ago, I think it was back in 04 at the analyst events and how, you know, somebody had mentioned, would you buy Nintendo? Uh, we were talking about the Xbox strategy and, and his eyes lit up. He goes, is Nintendo for sale? <laughs> anyway, whatever. Check out that, that vlog if you want to. It's kind of fun. And I really nerded out. You can tell I'm a big gamer in that vlog as well. Okay. Um, Rohit saying, is there um, any ideal way to study an entire MBA one course? How many hours should one spend per day or per week? Um, how did I plan that a student should take the course of the best experience? So I, I think that whenever you take my courses, um, take them if you're having problems sleeping because you'll be out like a light. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> when you take a, a, any course in general, um, I, I recommend doing it, um, if you can, first thing in the morning, um, it, it, unless it's, you're, you're not having problems absorbing everything because 
again, when, when you first wake up, you're really fresh. So get up, you know, make yourself a, a Tim Horton, which says 70% market share in Canada represent. I love it. Uh, and, um, and, and just, just do it first thing in the morning. And, and that goes for anything you're doing in life. You know, make sure it's your environment is fun. Um, you know, if, if you love coffee and sometimes I'll go to bed and when I'm in bed, I'm like, I can't wait to wake up so I can have my cup of coffee, you know, like, like spoil yourself in, in, in areas where you want to improve your productivity. So if you're studying, you know, I used to bring classical music on my, my, my Sony Walkman. I'm really dating myself, uh, to, to the library. I get Starbucks coffee. I'd sneak it into the McGill library. So the, you know, the security guy didn't see it, uh, that sort of thing, um, Make your environment fun. And for me, what I do is I have a rolling desk and I'll move it around at different locations uh, in my house as well. Um, and, and speaking of, of um, environment, let me show you something here. You guys are going to love this. All right. <laughs> I take risks. Sometimes I, I overdo it. Sometimes I work, sometimes I don't. All right, this here is my latest coat rack. Just kidding. This here is uh, a bicycle that I ride when I'm working. You can sort of see the lights there too now. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it is like a hundred bucks or so. I think I got on Amazon and I can make it harder here, here, yeah, by tightening this. And, and I can see here digitally how I'm doing. And, and I put this down on, on the ground and, and I cycle. And I think that every desk should have the ability to stand up. And I went to, uh, there's a great website and, and I'm going to go there with you right now because I think everybody should, should get something like this. So when I work, um, I, I, I like to, I like to exercise, um, because I'm always working, which is my passion. Uh, and, and, and I want to show you also, because I think everybody should have a stand up desk and I bought a stand up desk. I'm going to show you which one. Okay. And, and I think it's a great investment for you as well. Um, so it's a little pricey when I show you, you can get cheaper alternatives, but I bought a stand up desk that I, I push a button and it, and it, re, it goes up. That was re, the sound of the motor. Uh, and, and I also have, and it's in my, my, my other office. Uh, I also have this thing I stand on, uh, which chefs use. And it's so comfortable when you stand on it because it, um, it, it's, it's kind of cushiony. Uh, and there's a little bubble at the back of it. So you can actually stretch while you're exercising, but my productivity went up a lot when I did this, okay? And I only let myself use that desk when I'm doing uh, my, my, my Udemy teaching stuff. Uh, it's kind of like an incentive like the, like this. So let's let's go there together uh, and just bear with me. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen in a different innovative way. There we go, hey? That was me showing off. Okay, hold on a second. Palm trees. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go together to fully. And as with everything you buy, uh, make sure that uh, you search for coupon codes. I have a little plug-in for my browser on my other computer, uh, which is, um, <clears throat> pardon me, it's, uh, it's called Honey. And Honey will basically uh, find a discount and search all codes while I'm checking out. And it will say, hey, you can get this cheaper, that sort of thing. <coughs> pardon me. All right, so here's a stand-up desk here. You see that? And this is actually the, the, the one I have. And um, <clears throat> you can customize it as well. And I have it all white, which, which I think looks really, really nice. Um, internet's kind of slow. Hope it's not. Oh, here it is here. Yeah. All right. This is what I have here. So you see that little stand down there? Well, anyways, it's down there. Um, I'll scroll down again. There was that little uh, mat. Here it is here. You see the stand here? Let me see if I can log, zoom in a bit here. This is what I stand on. And it, it, is, it is awesome. It helps me a lot. And chefs do it so that it's, you know, that it's more comfortable for them standing up. And, and a lot of chefs, and I met a bunch actually, uh, that, are, that are in great shape. And I said, why are you in great shape? I thought chefs are supposed to be like Dom DeLuise, like overweight. And the chefs have told me the same thing, which is this. They're standing, which burns more calories than sitting. And they're eating all day long, small meals. They're, they're sampling stuff, right? They don't sit down for big meals. And if you have small meals throughout the day and you stand, you burn more calories. A little off topic, but interesting, I think. 
So here, here's the desk I have. And it, it's simplistic. I love this whole simplistic uh, concept here. Um, this goes up and down. That's the little motor uh, where you can set it up and down. Uh, and then you can buy accessories to, like I bought an accessory to hold my iMac, whatever. Uh, and then this as well. It's a, <clears throat> it's, it's a worthwhile investment. Uh, and, and I think it'll make you much more productive as well. Now I put wheels on mine as well. You can get wheels as well. Uh, so you can move it around uh, in, in different rooms in your house. So anyway, it's kind of fun. It's a great investment, I think. All right, let's go back here. Uh, and I'm going to go off this, um, this screen here. Hold on a second. I'm getting better. One second. Sorry. Clear. All right, there we go. I'm back. All right, let's see where I was. So yeah, Rohit, that's what I would say. I, I would study um, first thing in the morning if you can. Uh, and if you can't, then exercise when you're studying in the afternoon. Um, that, that sort of thing. And, and in terms of the course, um, you know, some people have said it's misleading because it has 49 hours. Uh, and and I've, I've complained about this a number of times. It's actually eight hours or seven point, whatever. It's like eight hours rounded up. It says 49 hours, I think, because there's a lot of PDFs. And that's the way the Udemy algorithm works is they account that. Uh, into um, in, into the the the, uh, the the course, so it, it is uh, only uh, seven and a half or eight hours or so. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, th those are my my humble thoughts on, on on how to take the course. Or if you're feeling really ambitious, you can take it all in one day. And I actually the content of that course I taught uh, to students at the Limo Foundation for free, of course. And so East Palo Alto, uh, which is close to Palo Alto, obviously. Palo Alto is a very, very wealthy area. I call it shallow Alto. Damn, I can't retract that. <laughs> but East Palo Alto, it's really sad because the high school graduation rate there is only 40%. And so um, I, I was on the board of this, this company called the Limo Foundation. I'm not as active as I should be. Limo, if you're watching, I'm sorry about that. But what I did was in early 2016, on a Saturday, um, I, I brought uh, my slides and, and I taught them all uh, all the, the Limo students. And the Limo students are students from broken homes in East Palo Alto. It's really sad. And a lot of them had deadbeat fathers. I don't believe that the term deadbeat mother exists. That's why people don't mention it. And so these uh, these poor kids. Um, and Limo you know, helps to train them and, and get some scholarships to the best schools, uh, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and, and what I did was I created a, a one-day course for them for fun. And there was about 20 students in the class. And you can go to my website, click on the, the charity link there, and you can see pictures of that day. But that day changed my life. And what I did was this. And the, the students were between the age of 9 and 17. They were so damn smart. Um, I, I taught them a, a course. And I put together a bunch of stuff. And I called it an entire MBA one course. It's kind of just made up on the fly. And then what I did was um, the next day or so, uh, I, I actually put a camera up uh, downstairs and my host and I recorded myself uh, doing that course in one day. And then on, on Monday, I think it was in January, February 2016, um, it, Business Insider wrote about it and it took off. But I, I think that the success, a lot of it was, was, was karma based. Um, if, if you give, uh, you, you receive. You know, and that's what networking is all about too in business. Give, give, give. And I promise you, and give from your heart too, because in the long run, I promise you, it pays off tremendously. And there's a great book that I'm going to summarize. You don't have to read it. It's a Harvard Business School, HBS book, two thirds of which is BS. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's called Givers and Takers. And this book is amazing. And it basically stipulates that the poorest 1% of people in the world are givers, beautiful souls, uh, like, uh, like Mother Teresa, God bless her. Somebody should make a movie on her. The middle 98% are takers. Most people take. And the top 1% of people in the world uh, are givers. And they don't give because they want something in return. They give with their heart first. And I really believe if you give with your heart first, what happens is eventually stuff comes back to you. You might call it karma, call it what you will, but you really have to give because you love giving, because you want to help. And for me, if I have a, a buck or two in my pocket, I feel so much better giving it away uh, than spending it on, on, on something. Anyway, it's just, just me. Um, my, my stomach is grumbling. Sorry about that. I got to... Have a little bit of my, my greatest hit shale, uh, kale shake. All right. Mm, it's good. All right.
All right, next question I got is from uh, Sasha. Sasha, I know about you actually. Um, I cl- you, you sent me a wonderful link. Um, let me just talk about Sasha for a minute. She sent me a, a wonderful message uh, in, in, uh, <clears throat> in, in one of my, my YouTube videos saying I should get my kids more involved. And I love feedback. And what I did, Sasha, is I, I actually, um, I created a bunch of videos after you sent me that comment with my kids. I actually painted the green screen here because of you, <clears throat> pardon me, with my son, Dylan. I then created um, that vlog on, on uh, with my son, Andrew, when he was flying the drone. And then I flew and I crashed it. Uh, that was because of you. Uh, so Sasha left a great comment. And uh, and Sasha, I actually clicked on on your uh, your profile. Let me let me show everybody here. This is amazing. Um, and and Sasha, I want, I want to ask for your advice. I'm so sorry I'm not reading your question yet. But but you inspire me, and you can inspire my students too. I, I want to show you everyone here uh, a little bit more about uh, about Sasha. Hold hold on a second. Uh, let me just uh, split the screen here. All right, here's what I did. I'm gonna click here. Oh. It worked actually when, when you left me a message, I was able to, to click, but Sasha has this, this great, um, this great website or this great uh, YouTube profile. Sorry, Sasha, I hope I'm not putting you on, on the spot here, but you mentioned, I think quickly there that uh, here it is here. Okay. So Sasha has got, I think it was 500,000 students. It, it's unbelievable. Look at this. Look at this. Five. 582,000. Wow. When you sent me the message, it was like 500,000 a couple weeks ago. It's amazing. Uh, and look at this. Edutainment. See, it's fun. She teaches what she, she enjoys. Is that a Canadian flag? I think I saw it there. Awesome. Represents. Um, she's very personable as well uh, and, and teaches. Um, it's great. It's great. Um, anyway, I, I, I love that whole, uh, your, your whole business strategy. And Sasha, I'm so sorry to put you on the spot, but, but my students inspire me a lot. If I could put you on the spot and when I catch up here, if you could please tell me five pieces of advice on why you've been so successful. You can just, you know, one one word, advice, whatever, on YouTube. How did you do it? How did you build a channel uh, with that many subscribers? It's it's incredible. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. And you certainly use edutainment as well, which is something I, I, I believe in. And you're very personable as well. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to read your question. Sorry, let me, let me go back here on, on, on full screen. All right, hold on one, one second here. All right, great. All right, so Sasha is saying, um, uh, I'm a Canadian living in Indonesia for 17 years. Nice. Uh, and, um, and I hope you recognize my, uh, my, my Canadian accent and, and you appreciate this. Okay, and this has to be in Indonesia soon, right? I'm a Canadian living in Indonesia, uh, 17 years, and I'm worried about Indonesia. Is this fear a sign I should be investing in Indonesia? Or is the be greedy when others are fearful not applicable here? So I, I think um, that's, that's a really tough one to, to, to answer uh, because I don't know much about, uh, about, about Indonesia when, when it comes to, uh, to investing um, I, I did. Um, I, I majored um, in, in two things when I did my MBA at Columbia. One was in finance, uh, and actually, it was a minor I did in, in Asia, East Asian business studies. And I, I remember I did it uh, right around the time of the Asian financial crisis. And there's a great book you can read called Asia Falling, uh, which I read ar- around that time. Uh, and that, in hindsight, would have been a great time to invest in Asia because everyone's freaking out. You know, you, you want to invest um, uh, when, when everyone else is freaking out. And, and you also, you always want to invest in broken stocks, but not broken companies. And so, and, and this is a very generic uh, um, uh, answer, uh, Sasha, but you always want to think five years from now. Like I said earlier in this call, you know, five years from now, will this company be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? Okay, it's a five-year test. And I want you to invest when people are, freaking out, uh, invest in your favorite companies. You know, you can invest in broken companies, but not broken stocks. So yes. And I'm not going to tell you which stocks because I just don't know. And I, I usually don't do that anyway. But but yes, if, if everyone else is fearful, if everyone's freaking out, that's the best time to invest. Always, always. And I haven't bought cryptocurrencies in a long time since I made my crypto course, but I did recently because everyone's freaking out. So that, that's what I believe. That's what I believe. But Sasha, you also have to believe in the five-year rule if you're going to do that. Like five years from now, will this Indonesian company be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? 
And I also, Sasha, want you to, to analyze the, the, the management team as well. And you can go to my vlog. I did a, a vlog one day on management teams uh, and how to analyze management teams from a venture capital and a, a public market hedge fund perspective. You can check that out as well. Um, so anyway, that, that's, my, those my, that's my thought process there. Uh, but um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I, I I was amazed. Again, I clicked on your your your, uh, your your profile when you asked that question. I changed my YouTube strategy because of you to involve my kids more. Thank you, um, and and I'd love to learn from you as well. If you want, just to let the rest of us know how you've been so successful. Um, anyway, thank you. All right. Um, next question um, I've got is from um, from Rafe. Um, Rafe is uh, I've got hotter coffee here. Uh, Rafe is saying, I was busy in my university exams, and that's why I was unable to attend a couple sessions. Uh, thank you very much for your answer. Oh, thank you, Rafe. And earlier on, I said I hadn't seen Rafe on the call in a couple of weeks. Um, love your Apple logo, too. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Paul. How are you? Uh, thank you uh, for your in in inspiring example. Uh, you, you inspire me, all my students, please. What specific math classes or concepts uh, would you recommend in preparing for a successful MBA experience. So they before I did my MBA at, at Columbia, what, what we had to do was they, they made us go through what was called math camp. Uh, and in math camp, they just kind of ran through some basic stuff, which was covered in the GMAT anyway. Um, but I would say that mo a lot of the math stuff you, you learn in school is not applicable in the real world. Yeah, I love some of it, and I'm helping my, my son Matthew out now. Um, he's uh, he's 13. He, he's doing uh, algebra. It's fun to kind of figure out the sides of the triangle. Um, they're basic formulas, but that's all you need to know. You don't need to know calculus. They made us take calculus in business school, and I did an undergrad in business at McGill. Useless. Never used it. You know, they, they made me take statistics. Useless. I mean, I, maybe a little bit I learned, but I certainly didn't need to learn that much about it. Um so I, I don't think you need to know much, but I would just say basic algebra, basic algebra, you know, bed mass, uh, as well as solving for X. That, that's it. That's it. And in, in my courses, um, the, the only type of formulas you have to understand and in business in general is Excel formulas. And Excel is so much fun because Excel anticipates the formula you're creating when you type equals sum or equals whatever, and it helps you build that formula from scratch. But I think a rudimentary understanding of of um, you know solving for X formula wise from a math perspective is helpful in business, but don't don't worry about the other stuff as well. You, you don't need to know it uh, unless you want to go into a statistics based career, which most people don't. So anyway, that, that's that's my, my humble thoughts there. Uh, and when it comes to accounting, you just have to know you know plus minus equals whatever divide couple of formulas. That's it, uh, which I teach in my courses whatever. Uh, but don't 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 overdo it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So uh, next I've got here is uh, from, um, from 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 Rohit. Uh, it, oh, and by the way, uh, Sasha, I'm so sorry I put you on the spot again, but I got to ask you one more question. Uh, my students here have asked about what's the best time to take my my MBA course. You're it looks like you're an English teacher as well. What do you think the best time is to uh, to to study? First thing in the morning, in the afternoon. Do you have any any hacks for us? Thanks. Okay, hopefully, Sasha, you don't hate me. But um, anyway, all right, so <laughs> next one up is uh, Rohit. Is there any social group uh, or Discord channel for the students of your Udemy courses? So there, there's there's not um, uh, at, at this point. I, I will create something like that for my um, my, my MBA course um, the, the program that I'm creating. Uh, I don't know exactly what, what it's going to be. Uh, but but I will create something something along the lines of Slack or something. I, I don't know. But for now, we can just use this um, this Q and A right here, this format, which which is a, which is amazing. That background's a little depressing. Let me change that. I am a nerd. That's okay. At least I know I am. All right. Next question. Um, <laughs> uh, ne next question. Um, I've got here is Sir Chris, please. Uh, you need help regard if you need help regarding anything or for your future courses, uh, we would love to help you and, and work for you. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It's not fun. I'm having fun. All right. Next is from uh, Muhammad. Hi, Muhammad. How are you? Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Uh, can can I give advice uh, on 
how to uh, how can I get finance for my business with bad credits? Okay, okay. So <clears throat> I always recommend not getting a loan when you start a company, um, because what happens is banks will freak out. Uh, if you miss just one payment, and they'll take everything from you. And my credit rating in, in Canada, and Dante Dante and, and Sasha will love this, um, I got a $3,000 loan from the government of Ontario when I was 18. It was called a student venture capital loan to start a company, interest-free for three months. I started a company at the end of the summer. I didn't give the money back. I put it all into a biotech private equity investment, which was dumb, Venture capital investment worked out. I got lucky. My credit rating is shot in Canada. To this day, I could probably never get a loan there. <laughs> but what I recommend doing is getting equity investors. And this goes for everybody in the call. So don't ever get a loan from a bank because banks don't take risk. I want you to get money from a high net worth investor. And the type of person I want you to have invest in your company is somebody very similar to you. Okay. Um, and so... Um, let, let me let me use Sasha as an example. Sorry to put you on the spot, Sasha, but I know a little bit about you here. Um, Sasha's from uh, Canada, but lives in Indonesia. So if Sasha was going to start a company and scale her online uh, teaching platform materially, I mean, like big time, big time, like a platform so that she's not the only teacher on it, but there's many other teachers all over the world teaching English as a second language, all over the world in every language. Um, then what I would recommend that Sasha do is I would recommend that she reach out to somebody over LinkedIn, do an advanced search in LinkedIn on Indonesia and Canada. And, and Sasha, also you also put in your school if, if you went to a university in Canada, for example, whatever. And then what you do, uh, or your hometown in Canada, then what you do is you search through to see if there are people that meet that criteria. And if any of them seem like they might be high net worth investors, meaning if they started their own company, then meet with them. And they're going to love meeting with you um, or anybody that has a similar background. And I, I recommend finding people in general for everybody in this call that are maybe 20 years older than you, that are even more successful than you are. And people that are very similar to you. Why? Because I promise you that 20 years from now, when you're way more successful than you are right now, this goes for everybody in this call, 20 years from now, if somebody reaches out to you that is from the same hometown as you, the same, um, I don't know, the same school as you and maybe one other thing in common. If they reach out to you over LinkedIn and they have things in common with you and that person reminds you of a younger version of yourself, you're damn right they take that meeting. You would take that meeting. Of course you would. You want to help yourself. You want to help others. And so the bottom line, Muhammad, is that um, <clears throat> I think that you should not get a loan and don't worry about your bad credit, okay, because it's not going to impact how you start your company anyway. I want you to get a high net worth investor. I want you to get a high net worth investor. And what you can do is go to my vlog. In a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I was a guest lecturer uh, for um, uh, this um, French MBA school from Paris called HSA. Uh, and, 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 and I lectured. That, that was me showing off. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I lectured and I recorded it actually because I didn't know what to freaking vlog that day. So I brought my, my camera. Watch that. It's, it's like an hour long and it'll tell you how to raise money and how to approach people. And if you have follow-up questions after watching that, uh, that vlog, you know, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> I, also have a, I also have a course called Fundraising Advice. Don't take it because I basically summarize that entire course anyway in, in that vlog. Okay. All right. Next question. Oh, two people got Tim Hortons right. Okay. So Rohit got Tim Hortons. Uh, and then, then Sasha as well. Tim Hortons, uh, I'm in Bali. Awesome. Nice. I actually, I went on my honeymoon. Christine and I, we went through uh, through Bali. Uh, and uh, it, it was the coolest thing because we stayed at this nice hotel there. Every hotel is nice there. And we were walking through uh, the old town and there was this leather store. And it was so cool because they basically said, for 40 bucks, we'll make you any leather jacket you want. And they had a, 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 a copy of GQ, a men's fashion magazine there. And they said, flip through it. And I flip through and there's Brad Pitt or somebody, whatever. I get mistaken for Brad Pitt all the way, by the way. It ha and George Clooney, just FYI. Uh, there was a, a picture of George Clooney or Brad Pitt, I can't remember, wearing a leather jacket. And I said, I want that one. And they made it in front of me in less than an hour. It was, it was amazing. And there's this incredible, peaceful sense uh, from from everybody that lives in Bali. I, I love it. Absolutely loved it. Um, anyway, I could, I could talk about that for, for years. All right. 
Next up I've got is um, Barb. Hi, Barb. Um, okay to take screenshots of your live cast to promote your coursework, Chris? Absolutely, please. Mother of a millennial. Uh, I want more of my son's friends to know about you. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Just if, if you have you know, your kids taking the courses, just send me a LinkedIn message and I'll, and I'll give you whatever courses you want of mine for free. I don't want to make money off kids, but but give it to me, please, and, I, and, and I'll provide it. Um, thank you. Of course, you can take screenshots. And, and actually, what, what you can do is um, th this uh, this webcast, what I do is um, is, is Wrigley, um, within 24 or 48 hours after it's done, he'll write up the entire webcast. You can click on questions at certain times in case you missed it, that sort of thing. And what you can also do is you can download part of it. Um, uh, just you, you could search online uh, YouTube download um, and you could figure it out that way. If you do that, though, be careful that you don't install a toolbar or something. Just make sure you just enter in the address and you download it right away to your um, uh, to your computer. Okay. Um, let's see here. All right, Dante, why are there more companies, uh, in the United States, uh, going public than other Western countries? Yeah. I realize that a lot of big companies, <clears throat> pardon me, <coughs> mute didn't work. Okay. It's fine. I realize that a lot of, uh, big companies in other countries stay private for a long time. Is there a specific reason? Huh? The markets and and I, when I answer this, please don't, please don't think I'm being too pro U.S. because I'm a global citizen, whatever. But um, and 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 a, and a proud Canadian. But the financial markets in the United States um, work exceptionally well, and they're much more liquid uh, than than other countries. And, and and that's why there's a lot of um, foreign companies that will list. Uh, that are or, that already have their stocks on their own exchanges that will list on American stock markets. And we call those listings ADR. An ADR is an American Depository Receipt. And what happens is companies like SAP, so SAP, a big, great German software company, is listed uh, on the DAX in Germany. But it also has an ADR. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. The ticker is SAP. The same thing with uh, Infosys and Satyam, a couple of great Indian tech companies. They're listed on the Sensex exchange in India, but they're also listed here uh, on, on the NASDAQ exchange. And so American markets are very, very liquid. Um, and they also have very high standards. I mean, America has more law, more lawyers uh, per, per capita than any country. Uh, and as much as I despise lawyers, except for um, uh, civil rights lawyers and, and lawyers that are on this call, <laughs> um, lawyers keep markets in check. There's a lot of shareholder lawsuits. Um, the amazing thing about uh, about America, and I shouldn't say the word amazing, uh, is that um, any executive uh, that that's that's been unethical, I guess it is amazing, that's been unethical and has screwed over any investors uh, can go to jail. And one thing that always amazes me about America is how you can go from rags to riches, back to rags and back. It's kind of like, um, you know, like Tiger Woods. Um, he was loved, not loved as much. Uh, lo anyway, that, that sort of thing. Or Bernie Ebers, who started WorldCom. I think he's in jail now. Um, there's a guy I knew actually, um, and I talked earlier about how to tell people are lying, and I used it to analyze one guy who's in jail now, a guy from Long Island, uh, who was the former um, uh, CEO of Computer Associates. He's in jail. He's in jail for defrauding investors, for for doing one thing. You know what he did? Each quarter has 90, 90 days in it. He pretended each quarter had 91 days or 92 days because he, contracts that closed the next quarter, he pretended they were this quarter. And you think, oh my God, that's not that bad, Chris. So anyway, and if you're curious about why people go to jail, and I've gone to jail a lot. I, should, I shouldn't pause that long. I've gone to jail a lot to visit friends of mine that have broken the laws uh, with financial markets. And I never have. But what happened is they use insider trading. And, and I created a vlog on this when I went to jail. You can watch that as well if you want, whatever. Um, and um, so the U.S. markets really take insider trading seriously. Uh, and Martha Stewart, Martha fucking Stewart, sorry. She was a, America's sweetheart. She went to jail for two years for, for insider trading. How crazy is that? 
And if you want to know about insider trading, just watch the vlog I have on it. It'll teach you more about that. The bottom line is, if you hear something about a company or a stock that not every other investor knows or can get access to, don't trade on it, please. Because you can go to jail for that. It's never worth it. And if you work at a big company that's finance oriented and you hear something, you have to tell your, your, your compliance director so they can put that stock on the restricted list. I've done it before. Okay, great. Uh, so hopefully uh, that that uh, will explain to you um, will explain to you Dante uh, why America has a lot of markets that that, that tend to work uh, r really well. Um, so and there are other countries that work well as well, but I think it's just a lot of lawyers in America. Um, anyway, and and America is very pro capitalism. Obviously, we we know that. I mean, it's it's the most right wing from a business perspective, uh, 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 you know, comp or country that 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 there is. Um, sorry, that was my ADD kicking in, changing the backgrounds. Um, I just think that the, the financial system works incredibly well here, uh, and the federal re regulators get it. Uh, and Ben Bernanke is one of my heroes, um, as I think that he saved the U.S. economy and maybe the global economy too from uh, going into the the, the, gr the next Great Depression, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Because Ben Bernanke, uh, and, and you can watch a vlog I did on this as well. Um, he did his PhD which stands for plumbing, heating, and dishwashing. He did his PhD at Princeton in depressionary economics. And so he, as the Federal Reserve Chairman, um, really understood how it worked. And that's just another sign that the American financial system works better than some other countries. It, it, it's all relative. If you have follow-up questions about that, uh, please let me know, Dante. Thanks. Okay. Um, and before you invest in any American company, I want you to go to sec.gov, and I want you to download the annual report, which is called the 10K and read through all the risks. And if you want, we can do that in real time together right now, if you want me to. You could pick any ticker you want, an American stock market, and we'll analyze it and go through the annual report. Let me know if you want to, and we'll do this uh, once I catch up to that question, if someone uh, enters that, that, that question there. All right, so next question um, uh, I've got is oh, from Barb. Wow, I never knew a teaspoon of butter helps the medicine go down. What movie is that from? Somebody know that? A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Somebody tell me that. All right. A, a teaspoon of butter will help with alertness and clarity. Awesome. It, it really does help. Um, it, 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 it helps a lot. It helps a lot. Um, and there's um, something called MCT oil that's also in Bulletproof Coffee. Bulletproof was made by this, this, uh, this Canadian uh, in Vancouver. Bulletproof Coffee, that is. And it really works. But if you're going to put in the MCT oil, Last thing I'll say about it is just put one drop. That's it initially. Otherwise, you'll get a stomach ache. It, it helps you focus, but the butter helps a lot. All right. All right. So Rohit, how is Halt Business School? So I um, I, I taught a bit at, at Halt um, when I when I was working full time at venture capital. And and actually, what happened was um, there there was a student that cold called me. Uh, and um, wanted me to um, just be on a panel. And then one of the professors there, his name uh, Professor Herb Meiberger, who I talked about in my, my TEDx speech, great guy, big influence on me. Um, and he introduced me to the Dean of Halt. Uh, and then I taught there uh, in the MBA school and the undergrad school. And actually, I'm, I'm honored to say and humbled to say, that's what Canadians say when they're just about to brag. I'm very humbled to say uh, that I, I got the prize for the best finance teacher from the, the business school that, that year, uh, as voted on by students. And you can go to ratemyprofessor.com as well and check out uh, ratings that I wrote. I mean, students wrote as well. Uh, but but Halt was um, Halt was fun, and, and I really enjoyed teaching at Halt because. Uh, and, and for those of you who don't know Halt, it's the Halt School of Business has four or five campuses around the world. They've got one in Boston. Uh, they've got one in San Francisco here by the Gap's headquarters in the city. They've also got um, one in Shanghai, um, and, and I think there might be one in, in, in London or Paris. I, I can't remember. They've opened a couple more, and it's a very international business school. Uh, and, and a lot of MBA students uh, do it just a, a one-year course, uh, and, and I taught a lot of them, and a lot of them are successful. And one of my students, actually, uh, her name was Fulia Becker. She worked at, uh, at Udemy. And that's why I teach at Udemy, because she wanted to get mentored by me one day at Udemy. And I went to Udemy to meet her. And I was like, oh, my God, this company is amazing, Udemy. I want to invest as a venture capitalist. It's a great business model. And I was like, F that. I want to teach on Udemy. And I quit my job, and that's why I do what I do. Uh, but Halt is very international. And I find that Halt is, um, is great because when you go to business school, a lot of the time you learn from your other fellow students. Kind of like how Dante and Geronimo exchange ideas here, that sort of thing. 
Sometimes you learn more from the students than you do from the teacher. And Holt is very international. And so I think that, that plays into one of its big strengths. It's the most international business school, I, I think. Okay, I'm not biased there. <laughs> okay, next question is from Rohit. If we want to work at, at Haroon Ventures, um, don't work there. They're very unethical. Remember I was talking about ethics a minute ago? Okay, just kidding. Uh, what do I look for in a candidate b before hiring? Um, I appreciate that. So we're, we're not, not hiring at this, at this point, but you know, when, when we grow the, uh, the MBA business model, we'll, we'll probably be hiring at some point, at some point. Um, but I believe in, in the lean startup being incredibly lean. I believe that a handful of people can change the world. I believe that a, a group of small people, you know, can, can out innovate a company that has hundreds of thousands of employees. And that's the whole uh, crux of the Amazon business model. So Jeff Bezos has this rule at Amazon, which is called the two pizza rule, which means that no meeting is ever allowed to take place that requires more than two pizzas to feed everybody in that meeting. Otherwise, what happens, and you all know what this is like, whether you're in school or at a company, whenever you have a group, a team meeting, and there's too many people, nothing gets done. There's one idiot chef in the kitchen. And, and so anyway, uh, I think that small groups of people can change the world. Small groups of people, you know, a couple of girls or guys in a garage here uh, in, in, in California or anywhere in the world can start a company that can put big tech companies out of business. So I believe in keeping things small. Uh, there's only Wrigley and myself, and I want to keep it that way. I'll probably have to bring on a couple more people soon because we are, we're growing quite, quite big now. It's been, been fun, whatever. Thanks to all of you. We are growing all of this as, as a team together. But I outsource everything. And for those of you looking to start a company, and maybe you've taken my complete business plan course, where I talk about this a lot, I want you to outsource everything. Everything. Everything, everything, everything. I want you to outsource accounting. I want you to outsource graphic design to fiber.com. That's five with two R's.com. I actually... Um, for five bucks, I had this logo, which I've used in a couple of my courses. Um, I, I've had that, that logo created for me from Fiverr.com in 24 hours. Outsource everything you're not good at and only focus on, on what you're good at in general when you start a company. You know, a lot of people will work for other people and they'll do job function X. And then what happens is they think to themselves, my God, I can get paid much more doing this myself. And they leave and start their own company doing job function X. And they don't make it. They're not successful, partially due to the fact that they didn't realize how much time they would have to spend, you know, trying to raise money or do accounting or doing this or doing that and not job function X. You got to focus on job function X and everything else is a waste of your time. You need to outsource that to everybody else. Outsource as much as you can and don't have that many employees. Always keep companies small. Because again, small groups of people can change the world. Otherwise, what happens is the company gets bureaucratic and, and you know nothing, nothing happens from an innovation perspective, which I mean, sometimes it can if the, if the founder is still there, but anyway, you get the idea. Okay, next question is, whoa, uh, from Rohit, will I ever run for office, sir? You have all the, the qualities of being POTUS. Wow, thank you. POTUS stands for um, President of, of the United States. Well, I, I'm humbled, thank you. I'm, I've said the F word a couple of times in this call, so I can't do that. And, and I also did this and you know, the, 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 the campaigners that would campaign against me would, would use all that stuff. Plus, I was born in Canada. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I could handle it being a, a politician. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. I just I, I couldn't do it. I don't think I could do it. I, I think that a lot of politicians, um, a lot of them are lawyers. And, and yeah, there's some great lawyers. Um, but, you know, if you're a lawyer, half the time, if you work in corporate law, at least you're lying. I just, I don't know if I could do it. I, I just finished watching House of Cards, uh, the, the final season on Netflix. Wasn't that great? But um, anyway, that kind of sums up uh, the evils of, of working in politics. And I think a lot of our politicians are, are, are good, good people. You know, I, I didn't I didn't vote for um, for Obama, but, but I think he's a good person. I really do. Um all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get off the the politicians thing. And by the way, thank you, Father Don't ever put down whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or, or PC or liberal or NDP in Canada. Please don't be NDP. <laughs> don't put that down on your um uh on on your LinkedIn profile. And don't ever follow politicians in in Twitter, because what happens when people go to your LinkedIn profile, they see that you follow Democrat or Republican. I'm not saying which one 
or if they see that uh, you follow on Twitter, the uh, Democrat or Republican, then what happens is half the people might not like you as much. I don't know what half. But anyway, that, that, that's that's what I'd say. Um, but the one thing I do love about American politics, um, which no other country has, is Saturday Night Live. <laughs> I just I love that. And I, I published a vlog this week uh, on, um, on on George Bush Sr. You know, God bless him. I think he was a wonderful man. Um, and um, how self-deprecating he was. And Dana Carvey, who was this great comedian uh, from Saturday Night Live, made fun of him a lot. Um, I'll never forget. He made a pretend Nike commercial with George Bush. He goes, got my Nike, got my Nike shoes on here. Just do it. Not going to do it. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but uh, um, and I made a vlog on, on, on and I'll, let me just talk about a couple things on why uh, Bush Sr. was successful in business okay, and politics, too. Um, and whenever I meet somebody successful in life, I always ask them why they're successful. And that was the crux of my book, 101 Crucial Lessons They Don't Teach You in Business School. And so um, I met with this guy who was actually the head of sales for government at IBM a couple of years ago. And we had dinner uh, when I was trying to introduce him to um, this company I was on the board on, of called Cohesity, a private company. Um, founded by a guy named Mohit Aaron, who's probably the most brilliant uh, executive and private company in the world today. Uh, but when I met with this guy from IBM, and we were having that dinner uh, in, in, in Menlo Park, he told me he used to work uh, for George Bush Sr. And he worked in the White House. He was an aide. And I said, give me some, tell me about him. Like, why was he so successful? And he gave me some advice. Uh, which, which I love and I included in my book. And, and you don't have to buy my book because I talk about everything in my book on these calls anyway. But uh, he, he did this. Uh, Bush Sr. would always uh, make celebrities feel like people and people feel like celebrities. Make celebrities feel like people and people feel like celebrities. I'm not telling you to be disingenuous, but... You know, just, you know, when you're at work and somebody's more senior than you and you get in an elevator with them and there's kind of uncomfortable elevator conversation time, you know, how's the weather or whatever it is, or I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Most people don't talk in the elevator. Just be yourself. You know, treat celebrities or people you work for like people. Um, be yourself because it's too hard to try to be someone else and they won't respect you as much if you don't act yourself anyway. And another thing that, um, that, that Bush did uh, was he was very self-deprecating. And when he lost the election to um, uh, the second election to, 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 to Bill Clinton, um, he um, the last uh, uh, Christmas or New Year's Eve that he had at the White House in 92, I think it was before Clinton took over. What he did was he had all of his staff there with him in the Oval Office and he treated them all really, really well. He's a good guy, kind of like Obama. I, I have friends that work for uh, for Obama, worked for him in the White House. He, he's, he's a good guy. Uh, Bush is a Republican, so I'm covering both sides there, people, okay? Uh, but what he did was this. Right at midnight, right when they said, uh, Happy New Year, or whatever it was, he brought in Dana Carvey uh, to give the last impression of him as president. And everyone laughed at him, and George Bush Jr. laughed at himself, too. And it takes a man or a person, I should say, to suffer ignorance and smile. Be yourself, no matter what they say. That's a quote from a Sting song called Englishman in New York. But just, you know, be yourself, be self-deprecating, laugh at yourself. Find humor in everything. You know, it's, it's just try to find humor in everything within reason, of course. But if you find humor in everything, including your setbacks in life within reason, of course, then, you know, it's a, you'll live a much longer life. And you'll be happier, too. You'll be happier, too. Don't don't take life too seriously, please. And there's one other thing he did. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what it was. I mentioned it in my vlog. OK, so one was positive attitude, self-deprecating. Um, I can't remember. Anyway, there, there's three I mentioned in, in my vlog. Uh, and in my vlog, I also include a picture of, um, of a nice uh, letter he wrote to, to, to President Clinton, um, which, which was amazing. I loved it. Loved it. Anyway, he's a, he's a good man. He'll, 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 he'll be missed. He'll be missed. I'm sure I'll get a down arrow there for talking politics. Like I did when, when I published that vlog, immediately I got a down arrow. Okay. Okay, Barb uh, is, is saying... Go with your gut and take care of what goes into your gut. Stay healthy to become the best kind of wealthy. Oh, I love that. Let me read that again. Go with your gut and take care of what goes into your gut. Huh. Stay healthy to become the best kind of wealthy. I like that. It's kind of like that um, uh, public service thing. When I was in Canada on TV, they used to say, you are what you eat. And now it's uh, everyone's eating organic. It, it is uh, you are what you eat eats. 
That's great. I'm going to take another screen print of that. Hold on. I like that that quote there. Thank you. Barb, I'm going to use that actually in one of my... Uh, Wrigley, let's use that in one of our daily quotes uh, for, for Instagram and make sure to, 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 to give Barb the, the credit. Okay. Um, well, Barb says, uh, I'm certainly going all in uh, with my webcast. Love what you're up to. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm taking this very seriously. It's fun. Um, and, and I want to make it perfect um, to the extent that when I click on the mouse, you, you can hear it. I'll show you. That's uh, something I, I got to work on. I, I, I'm going to play around with microphone placement. I'm going to make graphics and fun stuff, breaking news, whatever it is as well. And I want to turn this into an edutaining type thing. I, I want to kind of think like I want to teach this like it's Chris Arun Udemy plus John Oliver from HBO uh, and kind of turn it into a show as well, just for my, my students. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun uh, where I have to actually script and create stuff, um, I think. Now, now that I said that, I have to do it, right? So, all right. Uh, Dante said, you said ideas are commodities, but execution is not. How do we run towards our fears and take action more often? Um, so, I, I think you just got to do it um, and, and just not procrastinate. And, and the problem uh, with, with people that, um, that create New Year's resolutions, uh, and I got this from Tony Robbins, uh, and he really helped me a lot with this, is people write down their goals, but they don't write down a date when they're going to accomplish that goal by. And so what happens is, statistically, it's true that over 90% of people give up on their New Year's resolutions within three weeks. And so, Dante, what I would say is, whatever goal you have, you got to put a deadline to it, and I want you to vocalize your goal. I want you to tell people. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I, um, I told my, my little sister and all my family that I was going to write a book. Uh, and so what, what happened was, every time I saw them, they're like, how's that book going? How's that book going? Uh, if you get a chance, do a search on YouTube on Family Guy book. And it's funny anyway, people always ask me, how's that book going? But by vocalizing your goal, you got to make it happen. And what I even did was uh, just to motivate myself, I, I made the cover over Fiverr.com. There's this wonderful gal and um, uh, girl in, 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 uh, in Bangladesh that created creates all the covers of my books. And what I did was I had her um, create uh, the, the, the cover of the book. I was going to show you, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and I put the cover on, on another book that wasn't my book. And I kept it on my desk. And that kind of motivated me to, to get it done. And I wasn't allowed to take that book off my desk until I published it. But also by vocalizing it, telling people, it makes you follow through. You know, kind of like I did with my, um, my MBA uh, video that I released a couple of days ago about launching my own MBA program. Now I got to follow through because I told people about it. I have to at some point in 2019, which I'll do. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and, and I do that also with, um, so I, I, hold on one second. I want, I want to get something I think is, uh, is important. I'm trying to set my room up so that I have um, more room for all of my uh, exhibits here. All right. Don't go anywhere. All right. My goal, and because I'm telling you this now, I have to do it. My goal is to, um, I want to take this off. Hold on, I'm going to get rid of that layer. My goal is to get one of these one day here, okay? And this is fake, obviously. But I want to get it. Um, for a business documentary. I'm learning a lot about filming now. I love it. I mess up a lot, as you can tell with this, with last week and also my drone, how it crashed. Uh, but I'm learning a lot and I want to get one of these things for a business documentary that's also going to have an ethical side to it to encourage people to do what they're passionate about and also make the world a better place. And I had this made actually as a prop uh, for, uh, it says here, the, the, the complete presentation course. I went to AliExpress.com. It's an Alibaba company to get it made. So this is exactly what an Academy Award looks like. Okay. And, and I want to explain this to you in a bit more detail because I think it's interesting. Okay. So it's 13 pounds. It's 13 and a half inches tall. Urgh, my biceps aren't big. I'm going to make my biceps bigger. See how small they are? You'll see. There we go. Now that I said that, I have to do it. Okay. Give me two months. I'll show you. All right. Um, and what you see here is 
don't know if you can see that, but there's five circles. You see the five circles here? These five circles are, are film canisters, and they represent the five original branches of, of the academy. Uh, and um, the, the five branches are you know, production, editing, um, uh, acting, directing, and one other one, whatever. Uh, and so um, anyway, this is a goal I have, and, and I'm putting it out there, and it scares the crap out of me to even think about it. But I'm running towards my fear. My fear used to be public speaking. And so, Dante, the bottom line is I, I want you to I want you to visualize your goal and I want you to buy something, okay, that, that's gonna that's gonna be a, it's gonna help you uh, to actually make that dream a reality. Um, when I was a kid, I had a a, a little model of a, of of a certain type of car, which which I have now. Um, and and I remember you up on the wall, we used to put cars when we were kids. That sort of thing, we visualize it. And then we get older and we stop visualizing things like that. So I want you to write down your goals. Uh, and I, I want you to write down what scares you, Dante, and everybody. And I want you to run towards those fears because whatever fear it is, uh, and actually I'll vlog about that today, thank you. But whatever fear it is that you have um, uh, in, in your life, I promise you other people have it as well in business. And if you run towards your fear and you embrace it and you enjoy it, like say you're scared of public speaking, whatever. If you run towards it and you enjoy it, um, then you'll be much more successful than your competitors will. And set your dreams high. And there are people that are going to laugh at me if, if I never get this. Um, but I've got to quote James Cameron, who's, who's an amazing Canadian. Sorry if I'm too Canadian biased, but I am proud. Uh, James Cameron, who was a director, of course, and the writer of, of Avatar, uh, as well as Titanic and other great movies. He had this great quote. He said, you want to set your goals so high that if you fail, you fail above everyone else's expectations. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. And, and no entrepreneur that's ever changed the world or been successful has had a negative attitude. They've been positive and they've been confident in their own abilities too, right? They, they haven't given a damn what other people think as well. The second you start caring what other people think about you, uh, is, is, is the second that, uh, that you kind of give up in life because you're living your life for other people and not for yourself. Okay. Uh, and my goal, uh, Dante, and for everybody in this call, is to make you incredibly successful starting your own company. Okay, It doesn't have to be next year or, or, or next month, but at some point. And if I have not done that, then I have failed as your teacher and friend. And the same thing with my, my bi complete business plan course. I poured my heart into that course. I released it um, I think a month and a half ago now. Um, if, if you don't develop a successful business plan out of that course, I want you to ask for a money back guarantee 100%, even if it passes the 30 days. Okay, That course is to inspire you and help you to live your life on your terms uh, by creating uh, an amazing business plan. And most, most, a lot of companies fail because they, they don't plan accordingly. When you take my course, I want you to use it as, as a way for you to plan your future, the blueprint for your future, your, your business model. And if, if, you're do, if, if you take the course and say you're, I don't know, halfway through it and you realize your business plan is not great, stop taking the course, think of another business model and take the course again. And that's the, the crux of my one-page write-ups on my, my website. Go to haroonventures.com slash um, template. Uh, those one-pagers, that one-page template, and I have hundreds of them I've made. Um, most of them I start making and I give up on it after the first couple lines because I realized through my due diligence research process that it's a bad idea. That's how I want you to think about this uh, business plan process as well. Uh, and as part of the business plan course, um, and, and most of you have already signed up for I'm not hyping something up here or whatever, but um, as part of the, the course you get, uh, I, I, I provide you with not just 50 uh, word templates, thank you, Wrigley, but also 25 uh, presentation templates, thank you again, Wrigley, uh, that will help you put together a great presentation to, uh, to investors. And so earlier in the call, um, you know, somebody had asked about um, in, investor, you know, uh, having bad credit and wanting to approach investors. Take that course. Uh, and that will help you uh, with with the um, your business plan, uh, as well as with the uh, the presentation side of it. Okay, next up, um, I've got um, Rohit 
um, who is saying, who is Dr. Death on Wall Street? Oh, thank you. Who I talked about in, in my last webcast. Yay, somebody's watching my webcast. Thank you. Um, so I think I vlogged about that a couple days ago. So Dr. Death is a guy named uh, Nouriel Rabini. And he's a professor at NYU. And he's a rock star on Wall Street because in 2008, he was the dude that predicted all the awful turmoil that was going to occur. You know, right around the time when, when Bear Stearns um, declared bankruptcy and everyone was saying, buy Bear Stearns right before it went bankrupt, buy stocks in March 2008, he said, the end is near. And he, he was the one that forecast the horrific, horrific recession. Um, and so uh, anyway, he, he is now saying the same things about cryptocurrencies. I don't agree with him, um, but I do think that most cryptocurrencies are scams. But I think there are a handful that are worth owning in the long run, especially the ones where there is a dearth or a limit of supply of shares. Okay. But anyway, that's, that's Nouriel Rabini. Um, he's really, really negative. Um, and it was really, oh, it was unhealthy for me. I, um, I was running my hedge fund uh, and, and we did really well, relatively speaking. And we were betting against a lot of stocks. And when stocks went down, I, we were happy, but it was kind of a, I never want to work at a hedge fund ever again. Um, you know, making money when, when stocks go down. It's, um, anyway, I, I could talk about that in more detail if you want, but um, anyway, off topic. Okay. Rohe is saying, which AI course uh, on Udemy do I recommend? Um, I, I haven't taken any, so I can't recommend any, but there's a guy named Kirill. That's his first name. Uh, and just just go to Udemy.com. He's everywhere. He's great. He's a smart guy, nice guy. Uh, and, and he lives uh, in, uh, I think he lives in Melbourne. Uh, and he's Australian. Uh, and he told me when, when I say Australian, I have to say Australian. That's how I say it in Melbourne, Australian. Um, but anyway, smart guy. Uh, Kirill is... Um, that, that's, that's his cup of tea. Okay. All right. Um, have I watched Jiro Dreams of Sushi? It's a very popular movie in the entrepreneur community. Huh. I haven't. Let me take a screen print and I will watch that. Thank you. I, I love movies about... Um, I, I love movies uh, uh, about business and about the underdog. Like the pursuit of happiness. I'm just getting shivers thinking of that scene uh, with, uh, with Will Smith, who's one of my heroes. Uh, with Will Smith um, giving that speech to his real son in life when his son was playing basketball. Um, anyway, I love uh, rags to riches stories. Um, not that I'm all about money, I'm not. Um, but I, I love betting on the underdog. You know, David always beats Goliath because David thinks with his heart first and his mind second. And the same thing in business and all aspects, all, all aspects of your life. You know, follow your heart. Otherwise, this will not work. And if you chase money, uh, you lose your dreams and your money. But if you chase your money with your heart, not only your dreams come true if you're cool with failing a couple times, which is fine, who cares? But the money also comes accidentally. It always does and it always will. Okay. But I'll, I'll check out that, that movie. Thank you. Uh, oh, and there's another movie I want to recommend that you all watch. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's how I would end my classes. Like I'd always show these little video clips. Uh, as Wrigley can tell you in my classes, uh, just to break it up and make it more fun. And I would end all, I would always end the entire course with a short video from uh, a movie called Tucker. T-U-C-K-E-R. It rhymes with f uh, mucker. Okay. Uh, and um, Tucker is about a man and his dream. Jeff Bridges plays it beautifully about how he wanted to create a car. It's a real story too. Uh, he wanted to create a car to uh, to compete with Ford, Chrysler, General uh, General Motors, or GM as they call it, Government Motors after 08. Uh, and, and he creates a car called the Tucker. And it was created by Francis Ford Coppola. And if you go up to Napa Valley uh, and you go to Coppola's uh, vineyard, which, which I've done before, anyone could do it, you could see the car that was used in the movie, the Tucker. Anyway, watch the movie Tucker. I, I think it's wonderful. Uh, and, and it talks about how you can accomplish anything regardless of the odds. Okay, next up, um, how do I get into a startup accelerator like Y Combinator? It's even more difficult than getting into Stanford Business School. It's true. 
It's true. Okay. So um, for those of you not familiar with Y Combinator, um, Y Combinator is an, an incubator uh, that will take your company, you and your employees, your startup, or just you, and help you grow your business from nothing to something. Uh, and then they'll introduce you to a lot of venture capitalists that might invest uh, in your company. And it, it's kind of like getting, you know, saying you went to HBS, except two thirds is not BS. Like it, it's a big deal, Y Combinator. And there's a bigger version of Y Combinator. It takes a lot more startups and that's called 500 startups. And it was created by a guy named Dave McClure. And 500 startups, nice to go to their events a lot too. And I actually invested uh, in, in one of the companies I saw at that event. Um, but um, th what they do is they, they, they teach you over a couple of months um, how to pitch your, your, your idea to investors. Um, it's not going to be as good as Haroon Education Ventures MBA. I'm not kidding there. Okay, I'm, I'm, it's going to be an incubator for your firm as well. Um, but um, now that I say it, I have to make it happen, right? Um, but there's also, there's others too. Uh, and, and there's um, a plug and play tech center. And I mentioned this one because I used to be on the board of the FinTech Accelerator side. I, I would help uh, the founder, Saeed Amidi, great guy, um, you know, invest in, in startups. Uh, so plug and play tech You can go there. Uh, and, and that's it's franchised all over the world. So if you're in Brazil or Russia or anywhere, really, there's a plug and play tech center there. If you wanted to start a company and apply to that incubator, how do you get in? OK, so. I think, Rohit, one way is to prepare an incredible presentation, less is more, only use 10 slides. And you can watch the, uh, the fundraising uh, vlog I gave, which is free, or you can go and create a, a business plan, which, which I recommend you do, actually, uh, in my complete business planning course. That will teach you how to create an amazing business plan. And it covers all angles, every angle possible, so that whoever reads your business plan or looks at the presentation slides. Every single risk is covered. Every single aspect that investors want to look at is, is covered as well. And that comes from my, uh, my experience having failed and succeeded too. Um, so anyway, that's what I recommend to. All right. Rohit, do I plan on coming to India anytime soon? Uh, thanks for answering my questions. I, I'd love to if there's an event there to, to, to speak at. Absolutely. Actually, when I, uh, when I was teaching at the Halt International School of Business, somebody mentioned it earlier on the call, um, I think it was in 2016, uh, they, they, sent me to, um, uh, they, they sent me to India uh, to give a couple speeches. And so I, and if you haven't been to India, anybody on this call, you got to go. It's amazing. I, I loved it. I loved it. You get this incredible sense of peace there. Um, I, I can't explain it. Uh, and the food is amazing, too. Uh, and the best food I've ever eaten was at, uh, and you're going to laugh at me, Rohit, it was at uh, Punjabi Grill uh, in the Delhi airport and in the Mumbai airport. And so I gave speeches in those two cities. Uh, and um, it, it's interesting because when I gave speeches, oh my God, I, I remember this since then. Uh, I was talking about education and whatnot. This family came up to me and their, their, um, their, their kid had gotten into IIT uh, and uh, also into, um, and IIT is kind of like MIT. There's five of them in India, except it's way better and harder to get into. Uh, their kid had gotten into IIT uh, and also gotten into, I think it was Stanford, I can't remember. And um, the, the, the kid's dream was to go to Stanford. And the parents and the kid were there talking to me and asked me, they basically said, we're worried um, that if, we're worried that if Trump wins the election, here I go, <laughs> we're worried that if Trump wins the election, that our, our kid will not be able to go to, to India or to go to America, there might be issues. And I said, don't worry about that. That would never happen. Um, and hopefully Congress, you know, and the Senate keeps keeps them in check and whatnot uh, longer. So I'm rambling here. I'm just, I'm just being completely transparent. Um, I, I'm going to skip that subject. Anyway, sorry. Uh, but um, but for those of you who have not gone to, to India, please go. And and I sensed real like an incredible sense of happiness I had, like, like Dalai Lama type, Art of Happiness book. Read his book, The, the Dalai Lama, Art of Happiness, if you get a chance. Um, and I have a couple of students in Nepal as well. It's cool. Um, but, I, but I had that sense of peace. And, and I remember we were at the airport in, in Mumbai when we landed and we were on the, the my car was taking me to Four Seasons, whatever. I didn't pay for it, someone else did. Uh, and when we were on the way, we drove through the slums. And I think there's 25 million people in Mumbai uh, and maybe 20 million or, or a lot at least uh, live uh, in, in the slums. And there's a lot of rich areas too. But it was incredible because as we drove through the slums, Every single person I saw that lived in the slums, young, old, male, female, whatever, they were so happy. 
they seemed so incredibly happy. And I got the sense of peace in my heart. And maybe they're happy because they had nothing to lose. I don't know. But it was a sense of peace you get by visiting India. And when I went to Delhi, which is up north, uh, north compared to Mumbai, uh, it was different because there, there was animals walking around the streets. There was cows, there was, there was monkeys. And, and I loved it because there was this love for life, a joie de vivre. That's the only thing I know in French. <laughs> Just this, this sense of inner peace that, that you get there. But um, anyway, Rohit, I, I'd love to come to India. Hopefully uh, one, one day, um, one day I'll, I'll come there and, and you know, maybe be able to, to teach and, and, and meet with you as well. Thanks. All right, next question um, I've got, and hold on one second, I'm just gonna scroll down to see if the audio is working, see if anybody's complained like last week. Okay, it's okay, all right, it's good, it's good. All right, give me one second. Sorry, now I lost my space. Hold on one second. The older I got, the better I was. Yes, I see that joke too much, I know. Don't go anywhere. Hold on. Oh, great. You guys asked tons of questions. Oh, there are good ones here too. All right, hold on a second. Okay, here we go. Good. Yeah, Dante is saying uh, to at Rohit, I love when you guys talk to each other. Uh, um, at Rohit, uh, I'm talking about the artificial intelligence for business taught by, uh, oh, Krill uh, Aramenko. Okay, thank you for... Uh, for, for clarifying that. So he's a good dude. He's smart. Um, I was on a panel with him recently at, at, at Udemy. That guy's only 28. Man, he's accomplished so much. It's incredible. Smart guy. Very inspirational too. Okay. So next up is, is, uh, um, is Rohan. Hey, Rohan. How are you, man? Uh, I run a small business. Will your Udemy course help me? I, I think it will. I think it will. Um, if, if, if you don't understand accounting or finance, I recommend taking that course. Uh, the entire MBA course I have covers all aspects uh, of business as well. Um, I think that will it'll help. Uh, if you need to um, raise money or, or if you need to get customers and you want to learn how to present better or speak gooder, sorry, um, you can take my presentation course. So I, I think they all help. And, and when I teach my courses, it's, it's, based on, it's based on stuff I've learned and not based on theory. Right. And the problem with business school and business education is it's all BS theory. Like, have you ever really used supply and demand uh, uh, graphs in real life? Have you used calculus? That, that sort of thing. I think school is is outdated and hasn't kept up with the time. So I really think it, it, it should help. And, and Rohan, if it doesn't help, there's a 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. Okay. Uh, and if you're even not help, happy after 30 days, let me know and I'll, I'll refund you anyway. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Rohit is saying there's a great book about John D. Rockefeller um, called Titan uh, by Ron Cherno. Uh, can you talk about him, sir? Um, let me first of all take a, a screen print of that because I haven't read that. I'm going to see if there's an audible version of that. Somebody can make a great Rockefeller movie. Um, so for those of you not familiar with Rockefeller, uh, he was the founder of Standard Oil. He was a big oil tycoon that was, um, that was so powerful in, in America many, many years ago. Uh, that the government caused his company to break up into pieces. He owned everything. He owned the, the railroad companies. He owned the oil company where they got the oil. He owned the gas stations. And if you ever go to Esso, or E-S-S-O, Esso, which is a gas station, that's actually, that was his. And that was a play on the words, the letters S and O, standard oil. Uh, and so Rockefeller is very powerful. It broke his company up, whatever. And and, and even to this day, uh, his legacy and, and his... Um, kind of like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He has a lot of good stuff like that that have helped people. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to read that. Thank you. In terms of what do I know about him personally, I, I should study him. As, as that's what I love to do. Uh, but I haven't, but I will. And I'll tell you what, Rohit, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that book uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you on it in a future webcast, guy. Um, thank you for that. Okay, so next up, uh, I've got a, I've got a, a, a question from, uh, from Dante. Um, have I learned the priming technique from Tony Robbins? I got a discount for his Unleash the Power Within ticket in March. Maybe I'll meet him. boy. Yeah, do it. Do it, Dante. I, I don't know what priming means, but, um, and this goes for everybody. Um, UPW, which is Unleash the Power Within, it's a four-day seminar. 
uh, and I recommend that you all take it wherever you are in the world. Rohit, I'm sure he'll come to India one day. I'm sure he's close to Indonesia as, as well, um, Sasha. Uh, he definitely comes to, to Canada. If not, you can fly. Like I had a, I had a client of mine, um, one of my investors, had an extra ticket in LA and I went down with him. It was life altering. <laughs> and, and Tony Robbins is, um, he's amazing. He's amazing. And what he did was he read 800 of the best self-help books. I'm sure Dale Carnegie's books were one of them. And he created a program kind of like that based on the greatest hits and his own proprietary stuff, of course. Um, and uh, I think it's better than, than getting an education at school or any Udemy course you'll ever take, including all of mine, of course. So uh, I'd reckon it changed my life uh, and it will change yours as well. All right. And I, eventually, I met him after the fact, too, uh, at another thing of mine. Great guy. Big guy. Okay. Uh... All right, Rohit, um, how will you answer the interview question by Jordan Belfort? <laughs> Sell me this pen. So Jordan Belfort, for those you don't know, is played by um, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, in, in, in a movie, The Wolf of Wall Street. Very entertaining, um, but it was about integrating. Um, how would I sell you um, a, a pen? The way I'd probably answer that question is this. I'd say you don't need to buy a pen anymore because, you know, pen is an in, in business. Uh, tool. You don't need to buy even an Apple because that is going to be outdated soon. The kids don't watch TV too. But my kids used to watch uh, Logan Paul uh, and, and his brother, but he, they, they stopped um, because of what happened with the, the Japanese issue around um, Christmas last year. It's amazing. Eh? You can build up all this goodwill and just destroy your reputation like that. So, uh, all right, so let me go to where I was, uh, and and I'll start asking um, question or answering questions. All right. All right. So Arun is asking: Can the same rules of investing be used uh, while investing in the markets in different countries? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the whole notion of thinking longer term, investing in a great management team, and investing in a large total addressable market apply globally. Globally, you might have to be aware of certain um, local um, tax issues uh, or or geopolitical issues as well uh, that uh, aren't aren't um, aren't in all countries and you know, interest rate policies, that sort of thing. So macro will impact it a bit, but I still want you to be bottoms up focused and long-term focused as well. And so uh, the methodology is for investing, um, you know, transcend borders. All right. Uh, and, and again, I, I apologize for, um, for what happened. I'm back in black, my black shirt, the back background. Um, that was a ACDC reference there. All right. Next question is this. Uh, and then Wrigley will just call me if there's something wrong. Sorry about that, I guess. All right. So um, Rohit is saying, most people don't know Chris starred in a movie. <laughs> uh, love to hear the story again. Sure. Thank you. I, I was in the movie. Um, I was really drunk. I was in New York City, coming back from a bar when I when I lived in Manhattan, Upper West Side, uh, walked into a bar. It, it was uh, it was empty, sat down uh, and and um, next to me, Ben Stiller then sat down and tons of people walked in, Ed Norton included and a big film crew. And I looked at Ed Norton on my left and I said, I can't believe we're still shooting. And he goes, I know, dude, I just want to go home. Uh, and then anyway, I, I was in that, that next scene, um, kind of a funny movie. Uh, it's called Keeping the Faith. All right, Sasha. Oh, Sasha is saying the best time to study or learn is when there is nothing else you'd rather do. Um, if you have that luxury, I completely agree. That's, that's a great answer. Great answer. All right. And then Rohit is saying in the last webcast, you asked me how I built my website. Oh, I remember that with your res resume. That was cool. I built it using wordpress.org. Awesome. And then I used the theme Kerge, K E R G E, and it cost $12 and $5 for hosting. You got it all done within $25. That's amazing. Rohit has the most kick ass online resume you've ever seen. Uh, Rohit, why don't you share, uh, just share, share the link with anybody that's interested in doing what you did as it cost only $25. Um, although I'm sure you learned how to do some of that awesome stuff at MIT, right? Okay, Chris, you should create a course called Ethics and Morals, sir. Thank you. Um, hold on one second. 
Mary Poppins, Rohe, good. You got that one. That's right. Spoonful of sugar. I was ages ago. Love the webcast, Chris from Toby. Hey, Toby. My background is MIS. That's Management Information Systems as well. And I'm considering pursuing finance related roles. What are your thoughts? So what I'd say, Toby, is that the best thing I can recommend um, is, is that you, um, you leverage your network. Uh, and the only way you can get a job uh, in, in finance, I think, uh, is is, uh, is is by doing one of two things. Going to business school, but don't do that because you can do something else, which is this. Network like crazy. And if you can't network and get that job, then you do your business degree. So how do you network? Well, go to my website and download my networking book for free. Uh, the web address is haroonventures.com and you'll see it there. And, and I give you um, all of my best humble advice on how to network and I promise you, if you follow all the methodologies, you will get that kind of job on Wall Street or, or Bay Street if you're in Canada or other countries, whatever your, your, your street is called. Okay, great. So I'm going to now go here, see what the next question is. Okay. Um, Rohit, uh, recently General Electric laid off 15% of all its employees across the globe. I know it was harsh. It had a huge reper reper repercussion for its contractors as well, uh, you know, what tech and innovation are the factors which cause this? Yeah, so um, there's a couple of problems with, with General Electric. Um, and so I, I gave a vlog a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, where, where I, or maybe it was a week and a half ago, where I talked about um, United Technologies and why investors like breaking up companies. And I summarized my thoughts there on why conglomerates like GE don't work anymore. And the reason is that investor uh, investor attitudes have changed. Investors no like no longer like investing in companies uh, that are too diversified, meaning are conglomerates. And the example I gave in that that webcast vlog I gave was um, why the market wanted um, and private equity investors wanted PayPal to break up into two companies. PayPal, uh, sorry, eBay to break up into two companies. PayPal and eBay. Value investors love eBay because it's cheap and not growing. Growth investors love PayPal because it is growing and it's expensive. So what happens is the whole is worth less than the parts. So if you break it up, these type of investors will invest in uh, core sleepy eBay, the value investors. These type of investors will invest in PayPal, the growth unit, meaning growth investors. Now, when it comes to General Electric, it was so diversified that GE was a healthcare company. GE was a finance company before they spun off GE Finance. GE is a plastics company, a plastic division. GE makes appliances. Investors want pure plays now. They don't want to invest in all the... What, what if I just want to invest in the healthcare part of, of GE? I would say, screw that, and I'll invest in a healthcare company. And so splitting up companies makes sense. Now, as part of that restructuring and splitting up companies and whatnot, they also took the opportunity to kitchen sink it, meaning they let people go as well as part of the whole restructuring process. And so... Um, conglomerates don't work anymore. Investors don't like them. And that's why United Technologies, ticker UTX, is breaking up into three companies. United Technologies, three companies are going to break up into include the Otis Elevator Division, which is owned by UTX, the Aerospace Division, they make a lot of military stuff and airplane stuff, and then also the Building Services Division, uh, like Carrier, the air conditioner company, Carrier Cares. UTX owns that. Conglomerates no longer work. That's why GE is breaking up. Investors just don't like it. Um, investors, um, uh, their, 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 um, their attitudes are changing when it comes to, to investing. Okay, so next question. Geronimo is saying, I outsourced the design uh, of, of my side hustle company last week. The logo wasn't what I expected, but the animation was good. And also there are coupons for Fiverr. Keep your eyes open for them. Totally true, I, I agree. Uh, and, and again, I got um, this logo done uh, on, on Fiverr. I've gotten some translation stuff done on Fiverr. My book covers, uh, that sort of thing, voiceovers for, for my, uh, my, my, uh, my courses. I had Morgan Freeman do a voiceover in one of my courses. Um, so no, I agree, outsource what you can. Okay, uh, but I agree with you. you. You get what you pay for sometimes, it's not high quality. So what I recommend doing is only outsourcing these things on Fiverr to people that have close to five stars and not just one or two reviews, but hundreds, if not thousands. Okay. Next question. Um, okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, Geronimo has got a, um, uh, uh, is saying I ended up hiring a friend to a logo, which was awesome. Yeah. 
you got to be careful with Fiverr. Uh, only only do stuff on Fiverr with people with high ratings. Okay. Um, all right. And and next up, um, I've got uh, Barb. Uh, Barb is saying, uh, oh, Barb is saying uh, I'm the cancer caregiver for someone who worked for him at the White House. Uh, oh, for for Bush. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I'm behind on these questions. Um, these past few days have been particularly tough. He's one of our best quotable presidents. I agree completely. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No. And, and he, Barb, he was the real deal. Like, um, the feedback was amazing. Like he, he, um, he treated people with, with a lot of respect. People love him, uh, loved and, and will continue to love him. I, I agree. It's been a, a harsh couple of days. Um, okay. So, so next, um, Oh, Barb is also a colon cancer survivor. God bless you. Know from where I speak on the gut stuff. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. That's amazing. Barb, give me, when, when you, you, you beat cancer and God bless you, it's amazing. Can you share with us just one piece of advice on how you maintained a positive attitude? Uh, if you feel comfortable, if not, don't worry. I, I just love, I want to be in, in, continue to be inspired by, by my students, especially you with this. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Rohit is saying, even when life is being dull and monotonous, this webcast is what makes me passionate. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barb, for that too. Thanks, Rohit. Thank you. Thank you, Sailor. Appreciate it. Okay, great. So uh, Marin's got a, got a question. Uh, good evening, morning. Uh, what, strat what marketing strategies would you suggest for a platform-based startup? Okay. Uh, and you're doing my business plan course and you to me. Okay. So it, it, it all depends, but the best type of platform business is the one where um, you do something incredibly disruptive and the media starts to pay attention to you. And of course, your customers create the content on the platform, which is why I use the whole road analogy. Your platform, uh, Marin, is the road and the cars are your students or, or so your customers. The toll booth as well. You make money that way. Now, the way that Mark Benioff did it, uh, and he's got a great book called, I think called Above the Clouds. The way that Mark Benioff did it was, and of course, he started Salesforce.com, which is the largest employer in San Francisco. It's a wonderful platform business model. But what he did was he made friends by networking, using the concepts I teach in this course, or in this, this webcast. He made friends with, um, with, with 50 of the top journalists in the world. You know, people from, from Jim Cramer to, to tech journalists, et cetera. And what happened was that what his his very extreme views and controversial views on software got a lot of media attention, and he was able to use uh, the, the the media to articulate his thoughts on why software is dead. And I remember the logo for for Salesforce Salesforce for years at One Market Plaza where I used to work, right beside Benioff's headquarters, was software with a line through it, and and that was controversial at the time. A lot of people didn't get it; they didn't understand cloud computing. Now everybody knows what AWS is. And so what I recommend doing out, Marin, is, is trying to disrupt an, uh, an entire platform or, 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 or industry segment using a page, literally a page from Mark Benioff's book called Above the Clouds. Leverage the media, leverage networking uh, to, get, to get PR for you. Okay, that, that's, that's what I, um, I, I humbly suggest. All right. Uh, sorry, one second here. Good. All right, next question um, is from uh, Rohit. Um, and uh, it, Wrigley, do me a favor, just, just send me a text. Let me know how many people are on the call now um, since the, 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 the disruption. Thanks. Okay, um, Rohit is, is saying if Haroon Education Ventures MBA would be like an incubator, this is the best news I, I would ever heard. Thank you. I appreciate that. It will be. It will be. Thank you. Um, and um, this is kind of a crowdsourcing way for me to kind of design the, the, the program. And um, yeah, no, it, it will be, will be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then really saying, Chris, those short videos you showed in class saved me. As you know, I have the attention span of a goldfish uh, and the way you present in class um, on your course on your, and your online courses are dope. Uh, helps you to stay tuned. Thank you. And, and the only issue I have is technology issues now, but I'm getting better with this. Sorry about that little, um, I don't know what happened. I think it was a, a, a YouTube specific issue. It wasn't the power this time. Last week was my fault. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, and Arun is saying that masala dosa is way better. Try that the, the next time. I, I oh awesome. So so Arun is talking about when I was in um, uh, when I was in India. Um, okay, thanks Wrigley. Wrigley is saying get rid of the background. Might help with with the buffering. I'll, I'll do that. Give me one sec. Don't go anywhere. All right, great. Yeah. So, so Arun is, is, is talking about when I was in, um, in Delhi, uh, and, um, uh, in Mumbai, um, when I went to eat at, at the airport at Punjabi grill, best food I ever had, he's saying that masala dosa is way better. And for those of you who have not tried a dosa yet, you should. And I don't know why any restaurants in America don't have a dosa at the top of their menus or, or at all. A lot of them don't, um, but try it. It's the best food you'll ever eat. Kind of like the first time I had Krispy Kreme donuts right out of the oven. William, how are you, man? Hi, Chris. I downloaded the file portfolio dashboard XLSX and I only opened the file, the repaired by Excel. Uh, I received a message. Excel was able to open the file by repairing or removing the unreasonable content remove records name range. Could you check that file? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, and I appreciate that. Thanks, William. So th that's an issue with, with Excel on your laptop. Here's what I would try. Make sure that Excel on your primary drive and not a secondary or tertiary drive. Try that, okay, and re-download the file from the course. Open it up uh, in, um, uh, in Excel on your drive and make sure all other programs are closed and make sure you have a, a, a recent version of Excel, meaning anything since 2013. Try that. If it doesn't work, let me know immediately right here and I'll try something else. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Calapita. Appreciate it. All right. Um, next question um, I, I've got is um, uh, from um, Nicolos. Hi, how are you? Hi, Chris. Thank you for everything. Um, so much. So much. Thank you. Okay, great. I got rid of the background. It helped really saying thanks. Um, so my question is about universities near Silicon Valley. What do you recommend? I know about SFSU, that's San Francisco State University, which I love, uh, and how to survive there as a um, an international student. Um, so your question, what do I rec recommend? Uh, th there's a lot of great universities here in the Bay Area. You know, a lot of people have heard, obviously, of, of Berkeley and Stanford. They're great schools, but there's many other great ones as well. You know, when I was younger, I didn't want to go to Stanford. I wanted to go to Santa Clara University because at one point in my life, it's embarrassing that I'm saying this, I wanted to be a software copyright lawyer. And the best intellectual property law program on the planet is at Santa Clara University here. There's San Jose State. There's, there's so many universities that are here. My personal favorite is San Francisco State University. I love the students there and I enjoy teaching there tremendously. Okay. All right. Next up, um, I've got uh, a question. And uh, Nicholas, if you have more questions about Bay Area universities, please let me know. All right. Um, next question, um, I, I've got... is uh, too much to read, too little time. Any new book recommendations? Uh, thanks, Aruna. The only new book recommendations I have are the ones that have been mentioned earlier in, in this, uh, this, this call, uh, especially the one on John Rockefeller, uh, which is my, my next read, I think. I'm going to do that one. And also the one that uh, Dante recommended, uh, which Bill Gates recommended uh, on meditation. So those are the ones I'm going I'm to try out next. Um, uh, Calipita is asking, Chris, what do you think about the movie The Pursuit of Happiness? I absolutely love it. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite movies um, because it shows how somebody can defy the odds and reinvent themselves uh, just by, by, by being confident and by dealing with failure the right way. And the beautiful thing about that movie it was, is, is that it was so straight from the heart from Will Smith that that was actually um, his son in the movie, his real son in real life. So I love it. And it's a real story, actually. It's based on a, on a man that, that worked um, uh, in, in the finance industry here in the Bay Area. Uh, and at the very end of the movie, there's a scene uh, up in Pacific Heights, which is a, a rich area um, of San Francisco on a hill. There's a scene where Will Smith's walking with his son. And there's another guy that walks past him and looks back like that. And that was the real guy that the movie was based on. So I, I loved it. I love any movie that's, um, that shows somebody uh, from um, you know, that, a tough situation that, that defies the odds. So I was, I was a fan of all those, um, uh, uh, those, those Rocky movies. Thanks for that, Wrigley. Appreciate it. All right. 
All right, uh, so the buffering. All right, so I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm seeing all the buffering stuff. Sorry about that. All right, so I restarted it. Um, all right, so uh, William is saying. Okay, I'm gonna cover that. All right, hold on, I'm still catching up here. All right, so I, um, let me see here. I, I, I'm gonna throw this on. Um, it, so if you have questions, please let me know. I, I don't I don't see that, um, that, that many questions left. So I'm gonna go through what's left. Uh, and if I don't see any more answers or questions here, uh, then, then I will wrap up the call. Um, sorry, it's only been three hours and 15 minutes this week. But um, again, if you have questions, uh, answer them in uh, right now. Thank you. All right, um, next up, I've got a question from, uh, from Rohit. Um, your, your views on gold not being backed by uh, gold, my views on gold not being backed by gold and your, your two cents on Federal Reserve. It's private company, people say. I read a lot about the Fed and people don't like the Federal Reserve. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy people. Uh, I understand that. I understand that. I'm concerned um, that some, to, uh, you, oh, you've, co you've connected to some senators on LinkedIn, but I don't follow them. What do you do about that? Um, so sounds like you're based in the United States, Rohit. And I think you are. I think you're, you're in Boston or Massachusetts. I think you went to MIT or something before. Um, so what I would do is I'd reach out to your congressperson um, and, and set up a meeting with them. That's what they're there for. They, they serve you and your district. They were elected by your district. So reach out to them and voice your concerns that way. That's what I recommend. Um, I, I go that route instead of instead of going the senator route. Uh, there, there's more Congress people out there. Okay. Um, and Rohit saying, uh, do what you do, do you do best and delegate the rest. I love that quote. It's from the, it's from the book, I Will Make You an Offer You Can't Refuse by, um, oh, wow, The Godfather's based on that. Interesting. Okay, great. Wow. Thanks, Marin, for that comment. Marin is saying, I'm also listening uh, while you're driving. I think I learn more from this drive than my economics classes in university. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Okay, so I, I don't see any more um, any, any more questions. And, and so, again, if you have a question, uh, please type them right now. Um, and um, I, I guess I'll wrap up this call. So uh, I, I want to thank you all for your time. Uh, within uh, 24 hours or 48 hours or so, this whole call uh, will be ready uh, so that you can just click on the time and the question and jump right to the answer. Wrigley's been awesome helping with that. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and so uh, again, I, I want to thank you very much uh, for, for your time. Um, this was a lot of fun for me and I will see you at the same time uh, next week. Thanks again and have a great Friday tomorrow and a great weekend. Thank you.